dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end in time and welcome back Previously, on Missed Opportunities, Ghosts of Salt Marsh, the party attended a ball. A grand masquerade hosted by the Grand Duchess Cedra Donaire. Within the ball, they were able to witness the goings-on of the upper class of Dementlia and discovered just exactly where liar's dust came from. They witnessed in horror as, at some point, Someone was exposed for being a liar. Their clothing was patched and more threadbare, it was, it was revealed. And so the Duchess pointed her finger at them and said, Liar, I condemn you. A bolt of energy shot out and she crumbled into dust. This happened again as the party followed through with their promise for the sisters at the Three Odd Gables and removed a brooch from the dress of another woman. So two attendees crumpled to dust. Melvin was able to mingle with the closest advisors of the Grand Duchess, as was, um, trying to remember who else, uh, as was Inaris and Moriah. For Moriah actually was uh, danced with the Duchess herself, taking place in what they call the very dangerous dance with death. Uh, after the ball, they left in the company of the newly, um, well, uh, a woman named uh, Adelaide, yes. Yep. Um, who is the Lady Garnier. Her father was said to be an inventor of some esteem. The party believes that this inventor is the same person who uh, constructed the helm that is currently imprisoning Dominic Donaire, the person who is claimed to be the true Lord of Dementlia and who will help them break, their, break the um, curse over Saltmarsh. So, after the ball, after leaving with this uh, woman, the party came to a home at her request. The, uh, she had nervously requested that the group help um, uh, come to her late father's home, specifically asking Melvin if he would help catalog some of his more interesting items. It was then that they discovered that it seemed a group of ne'er-do-wells had broken into the home, apparently hearing about the riches themselves and the opportunity that might be there with the um, uh, inventor having just passed. However, um, there was a third party here as well. And that, um, as as soon as they entered the building, they heard uh, screams of terror. And from the second floor, thrown down at their feet, was a body that seemed to have been sucked dry of all its life force, like a husk laying there at their feet. Coming then through the wall and hovering above them was a terrible, uh, 
um, gaseous sort of looking creature with a, um, you know, mostly amorphous, but with a um, sinister looking mask. This was certainly the Red Death, the terrifying creature that they had been warned about before. This is where we pick up. And um, I will say, Nether, as you had, um, well, were basically asked to help out keep watch with the a group of these um, ne'er-do-wells. You didn't really know exactly what was going on, but you thought you would play along for the time being until you could return to the ship and rejoin your companions. And after making yourself invisible in a corner, you um, heard the those that you accompanied with scream in pain. And just at that time, your companions kick down the door and rush in, and then this specter emerges. Is this a free cast of invisibility that you're giving me? Or Okay, all right. Wonderful. Thank you. We were already in the door, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, sweet lord. Unfortunately. That's it's an elder dragon! No. No, it's <laughs> gonna spit tadpoles at us and um as you uh saw as well um if you would all put yourselves right inside this little nice building here and i will pull up some appropriate music as well try i'm terrible and the only one that hasn't updated my token what? We've had so yes. many weeks. I know. Tell ya. How dare. Lucky. Oh, I haven't? What? I, have, I haven't updated my token. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. So do we have everyone on? Oh, there's another. Okay. And uh, as the dried up sort of body um, was thrown down there to the ground, you saw this wicked looking form pointing down towards it and you could just barely hear the words um echoing out of its gaseous form that says arise and sure enough at the command as if being pulled out of this dried up husk of a body a anguished looking spirit diaphanous and um, and translucent arises from this body. Damn. Yeah. <clears throat> Wish I could do that. Uh, Wonderful. You could certainly say the words. <laughs> you could try. You never know what's going to happen. Try. Really Are you brave hard. enough? Oh. Wait a minute. Was that an advantage? It was. But it was. Feel free to take your nice little your left Sorry. hand side. Uh, All right, natural twenty roll. I think it's yeah. how was how does one? I'll fix it. I will fix. All right. Didn't even see you roll. Go on there. Yeah, I don't see your roll. You hiding? Nope. Yeah. You it have like you're uh, it. Whisper oh, on. I whispered it. Oh, it's fine. I saw it can't hide from me. Where do I change it? It's been a minute, guys. Is that, is that, it's, change that on Beyond It's 20? in the Roll 20, yeah. it's in the Beyond 20 plugin. Okay. It's like you've been doing, I don't know, some opera or something. Something else, yeah. Crazy. All right, who is not on the board there? I do not it, see. It didn't take mine. I next. rolled a All six. Right, I'll add yours. You're slower than Prion. I rolled a 600, <laughs> is what I meant to say. <laughs> uh, thank, unfortunately, anything above 100, you divide by 100. So, got a six. <laughs> um, so, Mariah, by the way, this um, creature that you see here is uh, hovering about uh, 20 feet up in the air above the uh just kind of 
hovering, I guess, in this main room here. So, Mariah, you are first to act. We've got a whole slew of high initiatives here. Oh, damn. Um, yeah. Well. Let's, uh, let me double check something first uh, before <laughs> sure. I forget. Uh, was not expecting to be going thing. that fast. Um, let's see here. Ooh, sorry. I'm there. You're fine. You're fine. Aha, you are within 30 feet. And as you start your turn. Ah, oh, shit. Um, you can, you feel this mask of death just radiating the energy of death and undeath. It feels like just looking at it, the sight of it wants to draw out your soul and your essence just through the holes of your eyes. You can um, choose to avert your eyes or make a constitution saving throw to continue uh, fighting. Will- Averting normal. my eyes affect my ability to. You cannot to see it. The small creature. Um. Uh, we will say no for this purposes that you are uh, considered blinded towards the, it, but um, not towards other creatures. You can, okay. you know, hold a hand up to the sun, kind of thing. All right. Uh, in that case, I will avert my eyes from the red death. Uh, the doors are open behind us, yes? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to back out now 10 feet and then uh, shout towards the uh, spirit that has risen up in front of Prion. Um... I recommend a different skincare routine, vicious mockery. <laughs> okay. Still haven't figured out how to I've properly insult people. I've got a wisdom people. save of eight. <laughs> Take six points of psychic damage. You'll never be as cool as a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else, uh, Mariah? It's funny because he doesn't have skin anymore. Ah! ah! No. <laughs> Does it do anything? Run away or anything? No. It's disadvantage on its next attack. Yeah, disadvantage on the next attack. Um, before Nether goes, um, it would be helpful for me to have an idea of where we are in the day. Is this after a short rest, a long middle rest? Of the night, really. Middle, um, well, no, it's it, it's more in terms of do we think this is a boss battle or not? Which I would have a better handle a better understanding of if I'd been playing for the last few sessions. Well, the, there and that's, and that, that's to the group. I don't expect you to answer that. Um, okay. No. Just so there weren't say. any combats before this or anything. You just, okay. They ball. But it was, yeah. there was an extended social uh, encounter. Yeah. I'm, right I'm out of this. second level slots because I enhanced ability throughout the entire party. So. Okay. Good. Got it. Good to know. I would say this is a boss fight. All right. What if um, like? <laughs> I'm actually going to scooch five more feet. All right, then Nether is going to um, run to here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 to right there. And she's going to use the invisibility to attack the Wraith at advantage with her Eldritch Blast. Do I get advantage on both attacks? Um... The spell. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's like two two bolts come and just so both of them would be at the same time. I think. Well, it's a single spell, that, isn't it? I would say I would say the first once. one, even though it's not a multi attack. I believe that that would. Um, You're cool. Uh, That's fine. Your first Eldritch Blast attack. Your first. Your first attack roll has advantage, we will say. All right. Otherwise, that would make. So that's good. So uh, that is a a dirty twenty. For four yeah. points of force damage on the on the purple creature here in front, the wraith-like being. Okay. Um, and then attack number two, not at advantage. So an eleven to hit. What? Does not 
hit. It's All floating right. out of the way. With that, um, Nether's uh, invisibility drops. Nether! What? I'll explain later. Um, and then um, I think Dahl is going to go ahead and, and shoot from way as far up in the building as he could possibly be up in the shadows, in the rafters, um, dropping his, invi- uh, his invisibility as uh, a little dart goes shooting out. Hitting AC7 with a natural one. Uh, uh, but he's attacking from invisibility, so uh, it would also be a um, it would be a natural twenty. So, oh, two, there you go. two points of damage. Wow! <laughs> and uh, and it needs to make a Constitution save if it is uh, susceptible to poison, which I expect it is not. It is, sadly, not. Yeah, right. And that it is another done. Shed that mortal coil. So, <clears throat> alrighty. Well, yep. I have a uh, target right in front of me. Um, attack of opportunity. Do you get it when it it hasn't? It, didn't it start its turn within your reach, or don't you have a ten foot reach? I have a ten foot reach. Yeah. yeah. Do you so have polearm master yet? I do. Yeah. Uh, Polar Master allows you to make an attack when it moves within your reach. Yep. Does yes. it move into your reach? Or, or is that a... It no. doesn't have to. Just read that the wrong way. Okay. Go ahead. I've done the same thing, Peter. Yeah. 17 to hit. That hits. Da, da, da. 12 damage. And it stays where it is. <clears throat> Alright. That is fine. We will keep that. But it already moved there. So, um... And we'll, we'll, we'll go with this. That's fine. But for future turns, the wording of it is when they enter. So please be careful about the um, language. Provoke an attack of opportunity from you when they enter your reach. Oh yeah, you're right. And this one here, let's see, where's my, yeah, this one poof, goes poof. And I kill it. All right. And you hear 500 others. Deceased, yeah, not five, some others, start coming through the walls. Here, one comes to here, and last one comes to here. <laughs> That's their turn. Red Death looks about. Hmm. What do you roll a? Um, Oh no, she's gonna walk up. Float up, rather. Descend just to um, five feet or uh, ten feet off the ground, does have some reach, and reach out to try to um, touch you, Rion. I have a 22. I shield. I believe you took your reaction. Oh, I took to... my reaction. Yes. All right. Correct. 23 points of necrotic damage. Please make a constitution saving throw. 23. Ow. Half my health Yikes. gone already. Constitution. 10. Your hit point <clears throat> maximum is reduced by 23. Oof. Wow. That's very bad. All right. Melvin. Please... Um... Avert your eyes, or make a constitution save. I'll I'll be averting my eyes. Uh, I was planning on doing that anyways. (laughs) Uh, um, Is Adelaide still here? 
She is hiding in a corner. Adelaide, Adelaide. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm just going to sort of shout in her general direction. Um, I assume you don't want me to light everything on fire, right? Um, it's okay, I'll figure it out. <laughs> it should be mostly fireproof. I'm, I'm going to be casting... I trust you, Archmage! Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to cast a, a, a radiant fireball to avoid catching things on fire. Um, and that's going to be uh, targeted over into this... this this area over over here so it should oh, yeah. catch those three without hitting Prion or Anaris. Uh-huh. There should be enough space there. Um, using a radiant damage. Um, DC 15 dexterity saves, saves please. Hey. Red death fails. Vector. A success um, above, and the lower one will fail as well. And that'll be uh, 26 points of radiant damage to everyone who failed, or 13 on a success. Okay. So, as if you are lighting a torch or lighting some type of light and dispelling a shadow, so this... Um, one at the top. It's almost as if you just snuff out the shadow of its spirit with the light, and it is completely erased from being by that fireball. Or that radiant ball. <clears throat> the other one so for the bright ball! <laughs> Somewhat, it looks, the shadow of it looks dimmer, less um, less gaseous and floating, but um, still there. Uh... Well, ho hopefully that'll help us a little bit, and I'm gonna back up. All righty, Prion, your choice <gasps> to- That's all I've got, bye! <laughs> you're, you're, you're muted. Good friend. I was gonna say, I'm gonna use my inspiration and look at it. <clears throat> I've got inspiration, 25 constitution. It was a con save, wasn't it, you said? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Um, you are fine. Okay. Uh, Eolak flies in. And... Eolak also has to either... It'd be kind of weird. Eolak is also needs to um, do this. If you act is going to go in and make a distract action, we'll need to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, I need to find his stuff. Hang on. Constitution. 16. <laughs> Thanks. You lack is okay. 24 to hit. That hits. Uh, 11. Okay. Uh, um, hang on. Second attack. 25 to hit. Certainly. Eight. I'm gonna axe and surge. Hit it again. For a 24 to hit. And a 16. 16 hits. For another 24 damage. Wowzers. What a turn. <clears throat> so, nice uh, my bonus action... I can't receive healing, can I? But is my recover health second wind, is that cast as healing? Yes. Okay. Your, max hit your maximum your max hit points have been reduced. Oh, okay. Reduced. Yeah. Well, in that so you case, can healing, but you just your max hit points are lower. Yeah, okay. You... In that case, I'll hit it with the butt of the sword. Don't forget the butt. For twenty-five he touched to hit. the butt. So an extra four damage. <laughs> Yikes! <clears throat> Damn, man. That was a that lot. Was a, that was a. Uh, Enormous uh, fighter turn but, right there. But, but I can only do it once. <laughs> That's it. Right. 
Does it, it look like the it <gasps> Wait, he's wielding a um like a mundane weapon, right? Do, right? Does it look like it's connecting? Um, do you have a magic weapon? I don't think it's class as magical, even though that I've got my Eldritch Knight thing on it. So I don't think it's class. It's not as, a magic I weapon. can still summon it to me and stuff like that. So I don't know how you. It's it's it's, it's ah. as much magical as it is for a moon, whatever they're called, weapon. That well, would that's be my actually, argument. And, that's is it? magic. Yeah. Because you can get yeah, them pretty I, early. <clears throat> yeah, it's um. All right, I'm gonna do this quick math here because you are correct. It is um. Uh, if it is a mundane weapon, it will seem to not do quite as much damage. But I still, create a it, magical oh. bond. Right, you're bonded to the weapon, but the weapon yeah. itself is not magical. The Eldritch Knight's weapon bond feature doesn't make a weapon magical. Yeah, says Jeremy really Crawford. It's get staged. Yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, yes. Um, that will make a difference to those of you seeing this uh, taking place and other attacks were spells. So, alrighty. Uh, do. All right, I've mathed. Unless you would like to move Prion, or are you good? No, I move to try and get closer. So if it flies past me, I'll get a swipe on him. Okay. <clears throat> Um, Inaris, are you shielding your eyes, or would you like to look I at will, it and be brave? I will not shield my eyes. I All will right. stand there make, and... A constitution saving throw. I am dead. It's <laughs> <laughs> an eight. Inaris, you drop to zero hit points and are dying. Nuh-uh. Yes. See, you're obviously clearly not as like brave as me. No offense. <laughs> I can't tell if he's serious or if he's, he's joking. Serious. Yeah, no, that's no. serious. Oh, he's uh, serious. It's the uh, the monster. Yeah. Oh, that's because God. she did. She didn't avert her eyes. She, she didn't avert her eyes, and she <laughs> failed her con save. That is that's zero hit points and dying. If you guys, message, um, if you if message you the can artist. Almost, dusky energy kind of uh, wisping out of Inaris' eyes and she crumples to the ground. Sorry, what did you say, Jade? I was to say, Chelsea, obviously, while you're out, if you message the artist and just give him an idea of your next character, <laughs> and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Curious, was there any evidence of the creature's health regenerating as the, um, as... Inaris fell? Uh, no. Okay. No, indeed. All right. Mariah, I'm assuming oh, that, you're continuing that, uh... by a version. Fitness, yep. Um, well, so I'm I'm outside. I can probably barely see the wispy edges of this thing's um, non-corporeal form or semi-corporeal form, but Ooh. I do definitely see Nene uh, drop like a sack of potatoes. Um, so I'm not really cool with that, and will uh, whistle a short melody such that we get a third level healing word. Oh, wow. A bonus action. A big word. For 13 points of healing. Oligarchy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Phantasmagoria. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, appropriate. Hey. <laughs> um, Inaris... Uh... You feel the life rush back into your eyes and you have, you are now conscious again with 13 hit points. You're welcome. Um, and then, let's see. So, averting my eyes means that I cannot target it with something that requires creature that I can see, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. 
uh, then I will simply look out um, towards this fellow over here um, and shout at it. Uh, I'd insult you, but your mother has beaten me to the punch. <laughs> okay. I've got a uh, natural 19 on the wisdom save, unfortunately. Damn it! It was a good roll. Never mind. I just kind of sigh. Nana, get your ass up. That's my turn. <clears throat> All right. Nether. Hi, to Nether. Moves to here. Um, Are you... So, it... I guess I didn't ask on the first time because it... Uh, the creature couldn't see you, but I sort of misread the ability. So, are you and Dahl averting gaze to the... This well, now, Nether cannot see, so it would affect Dahl. Um, so, Dahl is definitely not looking at the, the creature instinctually realizes that there's some force at work and is averting his eyes and concentrating on the other creatures. So we are not attacking. We are not attacking it. We are attacking the other things. And to that point, I'm going to fire off a couple of Eldritch Blasts at the purple thing that is here. And here comes number one. Hitting AC 21 for two points of force damage. Mm-hmm. And then attack number two, hitting AC 20 for four points of of force damage. And then... <laughs> you're just, you're warming up, Sean. Dull it's fine. shoots. <laughs> I'm a little stiff. I'm not feeling so great. And Dull's like, his bow, the little tiny dart goes into the um, wooden floor right next to the thing. Oh, you rolled a natural one? Yeah. Gotcha. It's whispered, so the other. Oh, sorry. See. That's fine. Why? I think Doll's stuff just whispers, but. Anyway. Oh, Doll's stuff just whispers. All right. <clears throat> um, and uh, Nether looks back at you, Mariah, and says, that, that was almost, almost insulting. I've had a night. <laughs> I don't know um, what that means. <laughs> and. Um, as she comes around here, she's going to step a little further back out of the room. And she's done. Okay. Well, we are going to have a... Um, Priyan, you have a attack procs if you would like to take them. No, I'm going to wait for him, main guy. Probably a good idea. So then these will all move to these locations. We will have a attack against Prion from this spirit. Uh, 18. It's a miss. All right. Against Inaris, it's going to reach down. Then 18 against Inaris. Hate to be that guy, but I think it's an is it, is it advantage because she's prone. I did, I did roll it advantage. Oh, okay. Yeah, that hits. 10 points of necrotic damage, and please make a another constitution saving throw. You got this one. Back to uh, That will be 10 points of necrotic damage, and your hit points are reduced by 10. Your maximum is reduced by 10. And then Melvin, I have an 11 to attack you. All right. Oh, unconscious um, again, in nurse. <laughs> She's got three hit points. Okay. I have three hit points. And um, eleven to hit me does not hit. I don't think. It's looking rough. I would oh, assume I do not have mage armor. You have. So, hold on. Even if you are unarmored, if you have at least fourteen dexterity, that will. Be, <laughs> yes. Would not. It will miss. AC thirteen. All right. The red death will. Well, worked against Prion last time. Hmm. Yes, we'll continue the assault here. Oops. Uh, 
this appears to just be an attack, right? Yes. Yeah. So reaching out to try to touch Prion, and I have a 15 to hit, which I believe will miss Mist. Okay. Um, it is intelligent enough, though. It will float up above Prion and over and above Inaris here. Has a 10 foot reach, so it's gotten in the range of um, a few of you. And will uh, hang out there. Melvin, same questions as before. Aversion? I will, I will not be looking at it. Unfortunately, that means most of my damaging spells are out the window. <laughs> uh, um, I think I'm, Good time for I'm, lightning bolt. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have that prepared today. I'm gonna. Get another fireball. I'm gonna do another fireball, radiant damage. I'm gonna sort of peer around this corner here and put it up over here. Hopefully, I can catch all three of them as I uh, point my point my quill and shoot a small bead of light, and it's going to explode into a brilliant uh, second sun. Well, it's kind of dark out, but you know. We have object permanence. Yes. Um, and I will need some Very saving throws again. Something like something like that? Yeah, sure. Alright. Deck saves. DC 15. Red Death is going to roll a... Oh, almost. Roll a 14. And little guys have an... Ooh. Both little ones both succeeded. 22 and 16. All right. Uh, 13 points of uh, radiant damage to the ones that succeeded. 26 to the big guy. Okay. And uh, I'm going to back up. I don't want to be here. It does have a 10 foot reach. Line. Yes, I, I know. Provoking attacks of opportunity for multiple things. That's okay, though. Does that mean I can All take right. my reaction then? Do you have Sentinel? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, the I have a natural one on the the little guy and the big one. I have a twenty five to hit. Oh yeah, that'll hit definitely. Fifty points of necrotic damage. H how many? Twenty. I, I heard I fifty. You said 50. I also heard. I 50. heard fifty and was very oh. concerned. <laughs> <laughs> twenty and uh, please make a Constitution save got this 15 you do got this your max is now reduced uh, eight damage to the big guy all right halved it is looking um the form is starting to bleed out and um, become very very wispy and um like like bits of it are starting to float away or simply dissolve into the air um, that brings us to Prion. Are you Prion. taking it or hurting? I'd have to do each round. Each round. I look bravely at right. Robin. 17. 17. <clears throat> do not take damage from it. I... Uh, Strike at it. Twenty-four. That hits. And this time I do it differently. I do nine points of slashing. Okay. Oh, and two points of booming blade. Two points. Okay. Yeah. And then I will, a bonus action, smack at this top one here with the butt. I believe. Okay. To look that one up. Uh, I don't know. How does that work? I don't think it. I think you have to take the attack action. Yeah, in order to use the butt as the bonus, as the bonus action, action, you have to yeah. have done the attack. When I take the attack. Yeah, okay, so that would not count. Which is really weird, because you're still hitting it with a bloody thing. But I understand. Yeah, yeah. so that's that done. 
Okay. Butts are, butts are weird. Butts are weird. <laughs> yeah. Daenerys. That's a great. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> are you averting your eyes or are oh you? Oh my god. Uh, sh I am not looking up at him. No. Okay. <laughs> Lesson learned. Um. Fuck. <sighs> sort of surrounded by a really horrible mist of <laughs> wraithy things. <sighs> oh my god. Um. Can I? Oh shit! Okay, so I'm gonna shakily stand up and get to my feet, and I'm looking pretty rough, breathing really hard and heavy. Uh, can I use my push my channel divinity turn undead thing? Nice divine power over the channel. Fuel magical effects. Oh no! Oh no! I'm gonna die. Thanks, Pixie. Woo. Um. Got a hype train. Nice. Okay, I can't move without a tech of opportunity, so I'm just going to spells and I'm gonna do healing word on myself. Okay. And she is going to. I'm just gonna give stand up. A pep talk. <laughs> just. <laughs> I am going to give myself a pep talk. I'm going to swear and drow, and I'm going to give that thing a nasty glare and cast healing word. So Raven Queen loves me. Raven Queen loves me. <laughs> I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not today. What's healing to you, yourself. What do we say to the Red Death? <laughs> not today. Okay, motherfucker. Ah, I like it. And... That's a bonus action. You can use an action if you'd like, Anaris. Oh, I want to disengage and GTFO. You can do that. I, so I will disengage and leave. I will. I'll look at these things. I'll shake my said, head and say, "No, no," and back up. In over in this like, corner yes, here, yes. behind yeah. this, oh, um, yeah, right. Actually, right where you on run. Top of that, like, <laughs> on top yeah, of Adelaide. On top of it, Adelaide is sitting there, and she's like, "Adelaide, Adelaide, <laughs> <laughs> your Majesty here." <laughs> and uh, beckons you in this direction. So, well, um, all right. <laughs> your Majesty, right? Yeah. I um. I actually, t I turn around and like I'm, I'm feeling a little panicked in this moment. But I turn around, lean against whatever the statuary is behind me, close my eyes, concentrate on the sounds around me, and send out um, via uh, whistles and small plucks on my violin um, a discordant melody to enter the uh, whatever uh, aural senses this uh, red death might have. I don't know how its anatomy works, but in any event, I believe it can hear. So um, I am casting this. It's only going to come in at first level, but I'm casting it at third level. Um, dissonant whispers. Ooh. Uh, so I will be rolling an additional 2d6. So... You just need to be aware of it. You don't need to uh, see yeah, it. Yeah, I don't do need. You? I don't need to see it. Yeah. Nineteen total, huh? Well, you can't see it, but you can feel its <gasps> gaze turn in your direction, and it shakes a bit, and it looks like um, this skull-like mask that it's wearing, kind of shifts and cracks a bit and then the form just <laughs> collapses like um almost like uh um the mist from like a, a cold or like dry ice and just <laughs> and covers the floor about ankle deep with this sort of gray looking terrible mist that begins to flow towards you and out the door not, not towards me, like attacking me, but just like away, maybe, I hope. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, <laughs> does it take thunder damage? 
Um, you sense that your spell has kind of gone away when it collapses into this fog. Heavy, soot-like fog. Open my eyes, look around. Is it gone? <laughs> you don't feel this oppressive... Um, Is it secret? Force trying to suck your life out of your eyes anymore, either. Okay. Clean up time, y'all. I admit, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm staying put. Right, it's totally gone for good and won't be coming back to bother us anymore. Um, and... I meant for now. And, um... Nether's gonna shoot another couple of Eldritch Blasts at the same one she was attacking before. Two bolts of dark green energy come flying forth. I have rolled a 21 for five points of force damage. Blast. First bolt will cause uh, that one to... This is your shoot at the other one that's over there fighting um, Prion, hitting AC 20 for six points of force damage. Okay. And um, Doll will again attack. With an AC 17. Um, yeah, that hits. Does one point of piercing damage. Almost enough to kill it. Oh, man. Not quite. Doll almost got the, got the first notch there, but... <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, we'll finish this up, see if we can do any more damage here. Oh, excuse me. Um, life drain against... <clears throat> Prions of 15. Ugh, which I think it's a no. I missed. <clears throat> and then it will... don't really know how this works. Now that I think about it. If it leaves through the wall. An attack of opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. You can take it if you wish. Nah. Rude. Oh, natural one. <laughs> so yeah, nah. And Mariah, it reaches out towards you. Bad touch. I've rolled a nine. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay. I suddenly like back up off of the statue, scramble around looking towards it. Melvin, this fog is rolling down the hill past your ankles, past your feet. Um, sort of moving out from the house and just shifting its way down and away while these specters are attacking your friends. It just, does it seem like it's moving naturally? Like it's just following gravity? Or does it seem to be like unnatural? Um, unnatural. It does seem to be... It's a little bit of both. This would be a natural path, but there's it it ripples and um, sort of cascades and almost splashes about in a way that you would think there would need to be more wind for it to make that kind of motion there's some sort of internal life to it but it is flowing out in a way a sort of liquid motion weird well, I'm gonna have time to deal with that in a minute, so I'm gonna help my friends first. Uh, I'm gonna um, turn toward the one that just attacked uh, Mariah, and I'm gonna reach out with um, a psychic spike and cast Mind Sliver on it. Um, it needs an intelligence save, DC 15. Oh, I failed it by one. Uh, it takes four points of psychic damage. Mm hmm. And subtract the d4 from its next save. Noted. Uh, and then I'm just going to say uh, I, I'm not sure that thing's dead. It kind of seems alive still, floating down the hill. Just so you guys know. Uh, one problem at a time, kiddo. That, that's what I was thinking. That's my turn. Okay. Prion. Um, I... Also, welcome Raiders. Welcome Raiders, table yes. 42. Oh! Welcome, Faye. Thank you very much for the raid, guys. 
Oh god, and all the subs. Yeah. <laughs> what are we on? Level four is it? Uh, right, okay. Um, yeah, I hit the guy to my uh, north. Uh, mm -hmm. With oh, Eolac comes down, and I go in with advantage for a 17, 18, whatever one you want. Um, ten slashing. Seven, seventeen hits. Uh, that first blow will kill this one above you. I move down to here for the second blow. Yeah. Which was a miss. You rolled an eighteen to hit, right? I did advantage with Eolac, so I just didn't roll it as advantage. Oh, I see what you're doing there. Yes, it yeah, is a miss. So you, and bonus action with the back end for a 17. For six points. Wow, you did it with the back end. Really? <laughs> yeah. I poked him with the, in the back end. The power of the butt. <laughs> the power of the butt. <laughs> oh. The power of butt you. And oh no, oh no. suddenly, besides the heavy breathing of your comrades, the soft sound of the evening breeze and um, panicked fast breathing of Lady Garnier, all is quiet. You look and you see that Nether is wearing clothes identical to the sort that um, Mariah usually wears. She has sort of models her appearance off of a sea faring smuggler, slightly darker cones. I wondered where you all had gone, but I don't know what, what all this is about. I don't know, but I I have found out a, a line on where we can get some liar's dust. Well, we uh, unfortunately now know where it comes from. It ain't pretty. How did you think it would be? It's... Well, I I didn't mean literally, but we can talk about that later. Um, Adelaide, um... Yes, are you okay, your majesty? You should have hidden much sooner. Your majesty? Yes, your majesty. Tell me about it. <laughs> uh, I'm leaning against the, the cold stone, gasping heavily, and my ebony skin is just covered in a sheen of sweat. My eyes wide. That was complete and utter bullshit. <sighs> and I'll get um, shakily get to my feet. And she kind of helps you up and actually takes a little bit of cloth and helps dab your forehead and turns to you, Nether, and says, mind your tongue, this is the queen of the Underdark you're speaking to. It is, and I go down Thank one knee. <laughs> Archmage Melvin of Neverwinter, it was incredible, your magical ability, like nothing I've seen. Oh, oh well, th thank you. I do my best. I right. assure you, uh, my lady Adelaide, that uh, my good friend Nether and the queen here are on very good speaking terms. Um, a, perhaps conduct that um, may offend what you are used to, but the queen has bestowed upon her a great gift of friendship. Yes, I am her uh, botanist. <laughs> yes, 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 she is. As I grasp onto Adelaide and support myself, keep keep patting the sweat, dear. The, yes, she's my <laughs> my botanist. I, I couldn't, <clears throat> I, I I couldn't get through the day without my flowers. Uh, Prion, were you? Uh, and I point to him. Were you? Were you? Uh, Kneeling to me. I... I was, Your Majesty. I am so sorry I nearly failed you. And I get up. <laughs> um, yes. She'll stand up tall and I'll put, uh, I'll, I'll put my hand on my hip. Y yes, you, you nearly failed me. And as, as punishment, you will now <coughs> carry me till I get some healing. Like shit up. Yes, I'll snap majesty. my fingers. I'll hold my arms out to him. I look to the group, but to look to Mariah. Really? Uh, just a couple minutes. 
I pick her up. <laughs> hey, Priya, you're not looking so good either. You look uh, somewhat diminished. I am, but I'm fine. As I like. <laughs> Your eyes have completely drained of color. Uh, maybe because but, I'm. But who am I to speak? Holding such a heavy weapon. Not you. <laughs> Not you, Your Majesty. Oh. My weapon, and I'll just throw it to the floor. <laughs> I will look at him in just complete astonishment. You owe me one. Whoa. <clears throat> I'll just wink at him and throw my sweaty arm around his neck. Um, Arya. What in the hell has this happened? The party was really interesting. <laughs> I might have hyped us a little too hard. You think? <laughs> <laughs> um, DM. Yes. Uh, before you ask that question, can I give a shout out to our... Oh, yes, please do. Yes. Um, I believe, did we hit level four? Is that where we were at? We did. Yes. Wow, does that mean we're giving away another 25 at another the 25. end of the show? Yeah, another twenty-five. All right. so you're lots you of all are incredible. Thank you for the support. Um, very quickly. All right, I can do this. Um, Zarathon and on. I like that one. Thank you for the resub. Pingu boy forty-two. Thank you for the resub. Pixie wink wonk. Three hundred bits and six gifted subs. Incredible. Thank you, um, Emmeline. Thank you for the resub. Chael for the gifted sub. Jade. Was it me? Was it anonymous? Clearly okay. not working. <laughs> <laughs> Anonymous J, thank you for the five gifted subs. And Striker Dan, 300 bits. Thank you all for the support. We invest all of this right back into the stream to bring you the best content we can. We try, and we're happy we can, um, you know, uh, hook you guys up with some amazing crack and dice. Thank you to you all. Thank you to crack and dice. So, um, what's that? Inspirations yeah. all around? Sure. That sounds fine to me. Thanks, guys. Much appreciated. Damn. All right. I just um, wanted to make sure that there wasn't any further instruction or anything I was supposed to do with these smugglers. Um, no. And they're dead now. Ah. Right. Was about How did to they die? die? At you, and says, you weren't with them. Why? I don't understand. Um... I was on an important mission for Her Majesty. She looks towards you, Inaris. Muted, muted. Muted. God, fucking, I mean, flipping. <clears throat> I'll look back at her and I will nod gravely. Very important. Hmm. Special well, flowers. I that I have missed misjudged your character lady Sorry, it, happens. it happens a lot um debris lady debris um please uh, do come in um it won't it shouldn't be back not with the likes of us here it doesn't bother with well one such as us we were maybe just a bit too early. It. We would have come a bit late. It would have taken care of that vermin for us. As she kind of indicates the couple bodies lying in the uh, foyer here. So, so you mean to say that you knew this would be here? Oh no, I didn't know that my house was being robbed. But N not not them. The 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 red thing. No, I'm only remarking that it would have killed them all and left if we had wouldn't have bothered us if we had just the presence of late. the Red Death is predicated on the presence of the shitty people, not us. Oh. That's exactly correct. It doesn't hunt ones like us. Huh. Right. Ones like us. You show up with these folks, Nether? Oh, no, no, I, um, well, yes, but it was a coincidence. Anything valuable on their pockets? Didn't have time to check. 
I'm gonna another... check. <laughs> so you, as you check, um... that was also, by the way, I believe a lie. I don't know if you care. I need to make a deception. You didn't have time for what? Sorry, the. Uh, no, that I that it was a coincidence that I arrived with these smugglers. Oh yes, that is. Um, well, she. Yeah, she is not listening that closely. You got All the right, pass good. from the narrative that you were here, and she's not. Um, All right. They, she's not particularly suspicious of you at the moment. So, with your passive charisma, you it's, a, it's plausible enough. She just doesn't really pay attention to your story. That's fine. It's so an insight roll from Jade. What were you trying to discern there? It's a nether thing, but we know never, so I wouldn't even bother, really, so that's fine. Yeah. There's, that means, Nether's still trying to figure out exactly the <laughs> dynamic here, and she's content to say whatever she needs to say to sort of fade back into the background in her usual spot. Is the an investigation check required to search these bodies? Uh, no. So, as you go through their clothes, they're mostly threadbare leather armor, cruel daggers and uh, rapiers. They have climbing gear, burglary gear, that type of thing. Um, yeah, so if they've got like, climbing oh, gear, they've got a set of like... tools and burglars packs, but um, gold-wise, they have <clears throat> about. Um, uh, three gold and ten silver pieces between all of them. Okay. So your well, majesty. Um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I I'll take both packs the the or the the climbing kit and the um, uh, thieves tools. Um, basically useful gear and the pittance of money, but money's money. So. I believe it's pronounced pythons. <laughs> Still buys alcohol. <laughs> Gear, not burglary gear. <laughs> so yes, um, Your Majesty, I, I don't suppose you, you could introduce me to this person and 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 help me understand why you're here. I don't suppose you would like to walk now as well. I, I mean, I'm quite happy carrying you. I, I turn and look Prion in the eye. Oh no, no, no. You can continue to carry me. I'm, I'm injured, see? You, you wouldn't want me to injure myself further, would you? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> I'll look back at uh, Lady Debris. This is our friend, Adelaide. And I believe we are assisting her with something very important. <clears throat> um, the, the the lady Garnier, and she whatever does, her does, name does, is, uh, straightens her dress a bit and um, does a bit bit of a curtsy and says, uh, "Yes, my name is uh, Adelaide, the Lady Garnier. Pleased to meet you. Welcome to my home. My now home." She kind of looks up and around. My father was, was uh, Lord Garnier, the chief inventor of, uh, for Her Majesty. Bit, um, eccentric. I haven't been in this house, well, well I didn't grow up here, but it's mine now. Um, I am the, the inheritor, so um, I asked your companion, um, Archmage Melvin of Neverwinter here to help Hi, me Archmage do and catalog the items and um, explore the house as I um, as I said I have not really spent any time here I was an incredible fireball mage supreme I am very impressed uh, thank you is that What's another that? one of your titles yes uh, it... apparently mage supreme that's that's a new one. Uh, I think I think that's just for the the court of the her her lady the queen here. Also, also the name I don't I really don't believe that I'm recognized as such in Neverwinter at this point. Also, the name of a really fine dessert. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
not for, really for alive. Sean's, so she... For Sean's sake, I think it might be worth noting that we are, I believe, still in costume. Okay. Um, oh yeah. So, <laughs> um, they're all dressed enormously, yeah. uh, beautifully. So, if you would care to de- each describe what you look like, to Jeez. Kind of this has been. <laughs> David, how about you go first? Okay. Um, Mage Supreme. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> um, Melvin is dressed in a uh, large white uh, mage's robes with um, blue and black uh, arcane writing and inking. Um, and some of this uh, arcane script is actually floating just above the surface um, as he has used a combination of minor illusion and illusory script to... Um, create small visual effects on on his clothing Hmm. okay uh prion is in his usual antique uh, armor it's been extra taken care of with a lot of polishing to make it really really shine and come out on top of that he has a purple sash made of velvet and a beautiful kingly cloak like uh, draped over his shoulders with uniquely woven runes sewn into the hem into the edges going all the way down very fancy dress ornately ro- uh, robe like uh, cloak like sorry um Mariah is wearing uh, dress pants and a sort of militaristic coat with uh, golden epaulets and black and gold embroidery with a uh, actually a sword at her side that seems to be of ornate make. And then, of course, being a queen, I have to be dressed queenly and I have a long black gown on the deepest black with spider webs trailing down my arms, thin silver silk with a a leather belt around my waist. No visible weapons that you can see. Another's dressed like a pirate with uh, (laughs) leather leggings, a comfortable shirt that is bound close to her body with belts, um, her hair, Done up um, and pulled back, and underneath a hat that has three corners, um, and um, just looks odd compared to the way you usually seen her. But she's contemplating changing her look, but maybe that's not the best idea right here in front of somebody else. But uh, she's content to be um, appears uh, content to appear how she does for the moment suddenly reminded of the fact that you owe me a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you. Um, it's all clear now. Well, um, may I offer you all a um, refreshment before we continue? Yes, Assuming, please. of course, you have the time to continue. We do. Good. We do have um, time, although we might want to multitask if perhaps. I'll you just could. need someone to find the kitchen then. <laughs> you don't know where your own kitchen is. It's it's not her house. Remember, she inherited it, but she didn't grow up here. She just said that. Huh. I've got a question for you. Where did this red death thing come from? How long has it been here? And will it come back after we've just destroyed it? Uh, as I said, it doesn't... The Red Death doesn't come for ones like us. You mean in Dementlia? Like, generally? How long has it been around, Priya? Yes. Oh. Well. As long as I can remember. Hmm. Why do you say ones like us? What are you referring to? Lordly. Yes, the upper crust, the refined, the successful. Then why did it attack us? I think we were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm. Convenient. 
It usually hunts down by the docks. The poorer docks, at least. I'm gonna go find that kitchen. There's the, uh, you know the song, right? The, the children always sing. It's an instructional tool, you know. We've heard it. Going down the, uh, uh, corridor trying to find the kitchen, I, I'm sort of, like, slightly singing it out on my breath, and it sort of, like, comes up over the air in the foyer. That's creepy. <laughs> Twirl and put twist the and bow, thing. we must careful now your land of dust. <laughs> yep. Were you here when that was revealed? Nope. I was so, going to say, who they put heard... the bop and the bop shabop shabop who put the ram in? <laughs> so they, <I> would... <laughs> they saw kids, like little children, practicing court dances out in the street, and they were singing this song that was, um, 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 that goes, uh, dance we now till midnight bell. Um, oh no, we're not poor, we're noble, can't you tell? Dance we now till midnight bell. Twirl and twist and bow, we must carefully now, or you'll end up dust. My belly is full and my purse, it's fat. My house has never seen a single rat. Red death never comes for one like us to leave us dried up like an old corn husk. Um, kids, do so you hear a light version of that? Catchy. <laughs> All right, but it's true. And as you all have seen, one must bow and bend and show their true grace, or end up. Well, no use to speak of that now, and, well, as for the Red Death, it's nothing for us to worry about. Right. Hmm. Kitchen, Mariah. I'm already, I'm already gone. <laughs> oh, Do I need to make an investigation is... check? <laughs> I will follow Karen and Aris. Sure, as you had, um, it's kind of up to you. So as you see, is kind of right. There's a looks like there's a foyer to the left. There's one to the right. And then just straight ahead under the balcony is another set of doors. Yeah, straight ahead. All right. So you go straight ahead and under and the doors do um, open up to you. And there's another what looks to be um, a, actually a sprawling ballroom behind these doors. Yeah, that's triggering. <laughs> and it is populated only with furniture draped with dust-coated sheets. There's another grand balcony extending across the entirety of the second floor. And out of the corner of your eye, you can swear that you see the furniture drapes flap just ever so slightly, but it is, besides your own light footsteps on the dusty marble and your voice as it echoes through, it is eerily, chillingly quiet. Sort of lightly two-stepping my way across the dance floor. <laughs> Are there any animals anywhere in sight? Oh, you can make a perception check. While Sean is doing that, just a quick announcement. It wasn't a level four. It was a level five hype train we reached. I actually got there. We got to a level five, yeah. Nice. Sorry, I read the emote which said a level four, but it was an, actually a level five. So $50. Well, huzzah. Uh, 19 is my role for perception. To sort of carefully scan the floor. Okay. Um, uh, looking through, you do in this first room, you see um, a slight bit of movement in the corner under a leg of a chair that might be a rat or mouse or something like that. Um, you see a small little beetle skittering across the floor into a hole under the wall. That's it. Besides that, that's, that is it. 
Um, is it possible to speak to the rat? In a second, uh, okay, I'm gonna okay. do a, a quick thing here because Mariah is sort of two-stepping across this ballroom floor here. Um, Mariah, what is your passive perception? Muted, sorry. Um, my passive perception is 18. Gotcha. Um, so you are sort of skipping and walking through here, and all of the sudden, you go face first into a wall, like hitting your nose in the middle of the room, and it just almost, you know, knocks you, uh, you know, you almost knock yourself out. You just th run into this, like, invisible looking wall. It's cold, it's hard, it feels like stone or something, and then you feel this click under your foot. And then a hissing sound as you all see Mariah go through this room. Suddenly you hear a thump and the doors shut and slam hard behind Followed her. Followed by a loud fuck. <laughs> Mariah, uh, please make a um, wisdom saving throw. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Uh, 16. Could have been a lot worse. Um, I will leave it for you to describe, Mariah. Um, you, if this this um, gas kind of burns at your eyes, um, start to choke in it a bit, um, and you suddenly see moving around in this. Um, reddish mist floating all about you. Your worst fears personified. Whatever that may be, they suddenly begin to manifest around you. In that case, I see shadowed humanoid forms, some with burnt faces, some missing limbs, uh, most of them with faces locked in uh, a silent scream, uh, and uh, all of them to some degree or another in uniform, and also many of them floating as if drowning. That is what you see all around you, and you are compelled to flee. I run for the door, which you said and shut, right? It is, yes, and you can all then hear, I don't know if you say anything, oh, let's see. Is you, you take six points of psychic damage as this these visions begin to sort of assault I, your brain and um, the door you find is locked shut mm -hmm. the rest of you on the other side hear this slam and you hear mariah you know the sort of casual mariah yelling out <laughs> fuck and then you hear something very different coming from the other side of the door yeah after that you hear a scream followed by basically screamed at the top of my lungs. You said you wouldn't follow me. Leave me, leave me alone. Like repeated at the top of my lungs. And I run for the door and I am like scratching at it. Okay. Um, make a, um, if you're just trying to force it open, that will be mm -hmm. a, um, a strength check to try to pry the door open. <laughs> That's a joke. Six. <laughs> they just hover around you, um, looking at you, reminding you. And uh, is anyone on the other the other side of the door? You can just hear this uh, this heavy um, metal door, um, and you hear Mariah's um, frantic clawing on the other side. She's coughing and speaking to some entity that you don't recognize. Jade, uh, just so you know, you've seen the doors <laughs> slam shut and Mariah has been um, calling out in a fear. 
I get it open. Get the door open. I place an arras on her feet, and I charge the door. Okay. okay. Make a strength check. Da -da -da. Thirteen. Okay. Um, I believe that's a strength save. Oh. Oh yeah. Um, you start to pull, and you can hear it creak and begin to bend, but 13 is not quite enough. Anyone else have a um, action to add or something to help with at the moment? I um, will rush forward and attempt to help Preon. So I will... If he can't push the doors open, I will pull a dagger from out from under my dress and attempt to jam it in between the lock and attempt to pry it open. Okay. Um, we'll see. Uh, go ahead and make a, this is kind of improvised, not using thieves tools, but use a, make a thieves tools check as you're trying to sort of hit the latch and make it easier for Prion to pull this open. Okay. Don't be muted. Oh, I said, where are my thieves tools? I was talking to myself, sorry. Um, it should be Peter, about the same as sleight of hand if you're proficient. What's up? What does uh, this door to appear to be made out of? Um, it's it's mostly metal. There is some wood in it, but it is... Um, and did uh, we get a chance to see how thick it is before it closed? I'm just wondering if uh, I can cast something through it. It's, it's rather thick. It's a few solid inches of wood and metal. Um, it's a sturdy interior door. Well, I'm wow. I'm going to attempt to cast a message through it to try to talk to Mariah, but I think it will probably fail. It's blocked by an inch of common metal or three feet of wood. So, It's not three feet of wood. That would be a heck of right. a door. Uh, <laughs> but if, oh. if it's more than an inch of metal, it, it'll fail. It's more of a wall than a hinge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the, your message will get through. Um, oh, as uh, an are, are you okay, Mariah? What's going on? Can you Can you explain? Um, oh. You can reply to this message. Um, perhaps without really thinking about what I'm replying with, you hear back a very panicked, I, I left them in the ocean, why are they here? Over, repeated, until I run out of words. And then Inaris, with that incredible sleight of hand roll 26, you're able to get the dagger in just right. Between your prying and Prion's strength, you fling this door open and you see this cloud of um, red mist that sort of cascades down and out from the room um, that, it w that it was filling up. Um, you don't need to make saves as, as it enters this room. It becomes diffuse enough, but you can you do kind of choke against them sort of uh, hot sensation um, in your throat and lungs as you breathe it in. And um, uh, this sort of sends a shiver down your spine, but you see Mariah, her eyes are as she barely recognizes um, her surroundings. And Mariah, they continue to follow you in the house. Yeah. At the Nether moment. runs over to um, Mariah and grabs at her arm, pulls her down and says, it was the gas, the gas, Mariah. It's not real. Am I getting through to her at all? Uh, Mariah, you can. You, you are in the frightened condition right now, mm -hmm. um, but there's not really anything to necessarily flee yeah. from at the moment. Um, mostly just that room at the moment is your source of fear. Okay. And. Um, I sort of, I take some moment for me to find your eyes. After a moment of heavy breathing and just looking at you, I whisper, I didn't think that they would follow me. And I cast calm emotions as a cool breeze that smells like salt water spins around us and then emanates out. It affects everyone. 
everyone okay. centers and calms a bit. Mariah, the mists sort of recede and the visions in your mind pass. You see them for a few more seconds. Mord may be just confused by them rather than frightened. You have a f strange few calm moments with these apparitions staring at you, and then they just wink out of existence as if they were never there. Likely softly enough that only Nether standing so close to me can hear as I look upon them in their last fading moments. There's just a very quiet, I'm so sorry, before they fade. These have bad memories. The sooner we can leave, the better. What are we here for? Um. Uh, inventions, Melvin. Yeah, um, I, I, I take out my, pick up my glasses and start cleaning them off. Uh, maybe we should be a little bit more careful moving through the building. It seems to have been, uh, trapped in, in some ways. Sorry. I think we should take our time. Just like my father, he was rather strange towards the end. Took after his grandfather that way. Right. Did you um, hit your head or something, or? No, there's a fucking invisible wall halfway through that room. Kind of yeah, you're not gonna see in. it by looking in. Oh. Uh, g give well, me a moment and I, I'm sure we can figure this out. I'm gonna start ritual casting detect magic while we're standing here talking. Okay. I start kind of stock pacing around the uh, foyer shaking my hands out and just trying to breathe as I watch her pace back and forth uh, I'll call out to her are you are you alright uh, take a small flask out of my belt pocket chuck a shot back and say yeah totally that's fine nether size we're fine, we're fine, everything's fine. Just let Melvin do whatever he needs to do and we can just fucking move on. Would you like me to carry you now, Mariah? You pick me up and I will sucker punch you so hard your ancestors will feel it. <laughs> I've got gold if that happens. <laughs> While I have this conversation, I like can I have a conversation, conversation with it. Rat that I saw earlier? Sure, yeah, it's kind of just hiding out there so I'll sort of go over slowly and as I do I sort of hey hello <laughs> I uh wonder if you could help us out in exchange for some food Food. Yes. Some camembert. Um, we're going to be walking around. Can you tell me if there's anyone else that's like us in this house? And if not, any places that you think we should avoid? Um. <laughs> um. You see, the walls are warm inside, but it hurts very much when they move. The walls are sometimes I hear one down in the basement, or sometimes the metal ones walk around. But watch out for the metal snakes that lay on the ground. They go and hurt. Thank you. That lady right food? over there. That lady right over there. She's got the food. 
And I just oh. motion towards Adelaide. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... The, um... Uh, gremlin you are. Um... Rat sort of come, you know, scurries in her direction. <gasps> Archmage! Kill it! Kill it, Archmage! It, it, Archmage it's is just concentra- a, concentrating it's just on a rat. <laughs> I'm, yes, I'm, ah! I'm slowly pasting bits of paper onto my glasses. <laughs> okay. Uh, she kind of looks around a bit and then down at it. It's just looking up at her and she kind of raises a healed foot and then just brings it down on top of it. Ah! And then kicks it away. Oh, disgusting. Oh, kind of Wasn't walks away. Wasn't there a line about rats in that song? Obviously, there's some repairing to do. Is this really your house? Now it is. Can I insight check her? Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> I was setting her up yeah. for it. Go ahead. Or I can give, I can help Prion. Is that okay? I, don't know. I always have a little trouble with the health on insight without. Can that. I help someone be smart? Yes. It's... <laughs> he needs it. Let's confer in front of this person. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so regular role, unless you want to be um, insultingly conspicuous about it. I don't know. <laughs> Do you think she's lying? Hmm. <laughs> uh, 15. She seems to be telling the truth. She says, I am the new Lady Garnier. This house has always belonged to the Garniers. What was your name before that? Fructus. I am not a widow. <laughs> Lord Garnier was my father. And he lived here? Yes. And you didn't grow up here, no? Grew up with my cousins. I can, um... He's my second cousin. Understand why. He was a great mind, you see, but he was um, a little obsessive. I didn't um, I didn't know him much when I grew up. Hmm. Archmage, oh, he's busy. Your Majesty, maybe you can speak on behalf of the Archmage. How much are we getting paid for this? We're putting our lives in danger for this lady and her trapped house. I draw myself up and try to make myself look important, which I do, of course. <clears throat> How much are we getting paid for this again? Um, your majesty is monetary wealth something you require? Well, obviously. How else am I going to rule a kingdom? I'll just sort of shrug. From, from halfway across the foyer, I turn around and say, If I may, your majesty, I think it's more of a matter of principle. Aye, that too. Equal exchange is worthy of royalty in the Underdark. That, I look back at her and I look back towards Adelaide and I nod. Yes, that that is why she's my um, uh, advisor. Yes. She is my advisor. Before you keep talking, make a persuasion check with advantage. <laughs> Who, me or her? Oh, her. Okay. Maris. Persuasion okay. check. Before okay. it becomes. Woo! <laughs> come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Bullshit with the best of them. 12? She kind of looks at you with a bit of concern in her eyes. Looks to Prion then with a really look of, um, with a, a hearty disapproval. And then back to you, Inaris says, Well, 
I don't understand the way things are done in the Underdark here, but um, this is... I did not intend this to be a business transaction. I thought perhaps the Archmage would be interested in some of the items below and that, well, you were accompanying him. We, we are we interested. be a situation of, well... I just wanted to make it clear that I am happy to help you. I'm happy to help anyone in need, but you've just been given this house. We turn up and there's a red death thing here, which we nearly die to. And now we're looking to make refreshments and Mariah gets trapped. What else are we expecting here? That's that's right. You almost killed my my lovely champion knight here, and I gesture towards Prion and and my most trusted advisor. I uh, okay. So um, I'm gonna hop in here in my sort of advisory capacity, still kind of like shouting halfway across the foyer. Um, maybe maybe we can leave such distasteful talk of um, equal exchange. Uh, sure, whatever. Um, for another time. Um, and instead we can see what else might be here. Right? I think that uh, there's a chance that there might be something to be gained that is not necessarily um quantifiable monetarily perhaps greater understanding um that we couldn't necessarily put our finger on at this moment so let's just uh, i don't know let's let's find whatever there is to be found and um we can uh, ch chat about stuff later Sweet. i just thought we had a more important mission but i'm happy to i'm happy to follow is this this part of it well let me go first then mariah whatever She's trying Prion. to find a fucking kitchen. Prion, watch out for the walls. I think there might be fire involved. Also, things walking around made of metal. And um, if you see anything on the ground that looks like it could be a snake or perhaps a coil of rope, avoid it. Okay. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll lead on. Okay. As you continue forward, you go through the same door that Mariah passed through, and you see a the same thing, a grand ballroom. Its only occupants are pieces of furniture covered in dusty white cloths. There was a faint hint of a the mist that was on the ground, the gas that had filled the room before, but it is mostly dissipated. I go to another door. Well, let's wait for um, let's wait for our, the Mage Supreme's ma detect oh, yeah. magic. Yes, oh, yeah. and at about after this long discussion, Melvin, your uh, spell will go off. Um, and right after it goes off, I'd also like to um, expend a spell slot in order to resummon the manifest mind of my spell book, uh, and I'll suggest uh, may maybe we should let this go first. Sure. After all, it can phase through objects, so if there is an invisible wall somewhere, we'll see it disappear. You read it, Sean. No, I'm not. No, okay. <laughs> I said... I said... Clever. Well, what would you expect from an archmage? His glasses At off. least okay. what I would expect from a mage supreme. God, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I want more ice cream now. Um, and I will allow the manifest mind to lead just in front of Prion then. Just in case. Okay. And it, it does your um, detect magic for you? Is that what you... Or uh, it, no, I believe that to have the thing cast a spell it has to be done on my turn so I don't think it can do okay. ritual spells so that's so on me but 
you, you're following and it's just right out ahead. Okay, so yeah. Prion, you, you move out into this room. It looks probably 40 feet long or so and maybe 30 feet wide. Um, Mariah, about 15 feet ahead is where you think you hit the invisible wall. I watch very, very carefully from halfway across the foyer. I'm like, <laughs> okay. like pacing back and forth the same like 10 feet, just watching him. I'm going to follow Prion. Okay. As soon as you enter this room, you detect heavy, heavy illusion magic from the floor, the ceiling, and every wall. Uh, there's magic everywhere in here. Illusions. Dear gods, I'm so surprised. Even the floor. Remembering I laid... I threw my weapon on the floor in the foyer. I just reach my hand out and summon it back to my hand and start oh. prodding the floor. Okay. Uh, make uh, anyone that is going to move into the room and more closely examine things, please make an investigation check. Oh, God. I'm going to use my inspiration on this roll. <laughs> I got a natural 20. <laughs> Damn, son. I said I was 14. going to do it, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Or 16, but... rather. Well, I have a natural... I have a, a 19. <sighs> gotcha. So, Melvin... Uh, you're a little bit stumped until both Nether and Prion reveal that these are the source of these illusions. You detect that there's illusory magic, but you're kind of tied up and how does this exactly work? And Nether and Prion, once you kind of realize that this is illusory, um, you, you can kind of see through the illusions and see that they're on each wall, on the ceiling and on the floor, um, there are some small contraptions. It looks like a blue crystal to which are wired um, different pieces of metal in a strange metallic contraption that seem to almost project this illusory appearance to the room. <laughs> now that you're in it, you can see that the room's size is only 15 by 20 feet. You look like you're standing in the midst of a grand ballroom, but the walls are in fact... Um, it's a holodeck. Of you ...in any direction. Computer, arch. Like that, yeah. Um, Nether will blast one with Eldritch Blast. Okay. The and as you hit the projectors, suddenly all of this illusory um, uh, projection fades, and you are standing in a bare, bare room. A bare room. A bare room. How big is the bear? Oh, what is a map? There's a map. There must be some. There's a door and a hatch that you can see in this right here, and there's a tiny little hatch right in the southwest corner right here. Sorry, that reminds me of another saying. We'll leave that there for the time being. What are we leaving for the time being? <laughs> what manner of being is the time being? <laughs> Sorry. All right, so you have a door, to, and you've also found the pressure plate um, looking at it that Mariah um, stepped on that was hidden beneath the illusion. Um, looking at it with those investigation checks, you can tell it will take it a little while to reset, but you can tell the source of the um, the source of that, and you can also see where the nozzles that the gas came through are on the, um, the walls. Um, I will... Obviously, prod the floor in front of me as I move forward. Ignore it. Obviously, not doing the trap. Yeah. Step over the trap. You've, you've cleared this room, essentially. You feel like you are clear of traps Let's in the room. There's a door here. There is, yes. Can, so Melvin's, Melvin's spell can go through the door? Uh, it can't pass through. Can it pass through objects? I don't even remember. Hold on. Let me double check that. You said that it can't, but it's really fucking small. It is a tiny creature or entity. Um, manifest mind. Um, it does not occupy its space and is intangible. Um, 
but it does not specifically say that it can face through solid objects. Gotcha. Does it say, does it say tiny? It is a tiny spectral object. Okay. I don't remember what we said about, um, I think I put it, I put it through the keyhole on the last, the last time I used it. So it was a simple one, a simple keyhole though, I believe. Right. Yes. Spectral though. Wouldn't that just go through stuff? Not incorporeal. Ah, okay. Intangible, but not incorporeal, I guess. Ah. I open the door. What? Traps! It uh, swings open and you hear the <laughs> sparking sound. Nothing happens, but you reveal a very small hallway. The end of it are three levers and a heavy, heavy metal door in front of which are arcing three streams of electricity in front of the door. So think of the, you know, three um, electric currents in front of it and three levers. What do you make of this, Archmage? Uh, It looks like a mechanical puzzle to me. I take a look at it. Does it look magical? Um, Looking at it, yes, it does look magical. Well, there is magic here. Um, In theory, we could try to dispel it, but it looks like there's a mechanical solution as well. Um, I do start making my way forward towards the former Grand Ballroom um, and sort of hover about five feet away from the door, kind of looking in towards where Melvin and Prion have... uh, revealed this new area okay yeah you can all kind of peek in and see melvin um as you move into this area with detect magic still up you do sense um illusion magic coming from this uh uh, sort of deterrent mechanism here the electricity that is Mm -hmm. okay um well it looks like the hmm Interesting. Chuck a rat at it or something. Um, well, I don't have a rat, so that won't really work for me. Um, Nether? Of course I could look for another one, but maybe we could try this instead. And, um, you are you are no longer trusted to rat kind. <laughs> Word spreads fast. <laughs> uh, Nether um, makes a gesture over her hand, and um, a pool of water appears in the palm of it, and then spreads out over her hand, over her fingers, and then continues off and forms a watery version of her hand. And she sends mage hand down the hall it has it sort of move in and amongst electricity okay the hand passes the, the ghostly hand passes through the electricity up and down Shall I try just continues to, to zap and spark check try to pull one of the levers aye uh, was there a uh, handle on the door Sorry. Something's like something is vibrating in my room. <laughs> I couldn't figure out what it was. It was really yeah. loud. Um it's like a truck drove by and like something was going guck, guck, guck. anyway, so sorry. Um Is is uh, there a handle on say? the door? Handle or doorknob? Um the Just door sort. looks heavily rusted, but um there is uh there is not an obvious handle or anything like that. You can see hinges. Looks like it pushes inward, but there is no um, handle or keyhole or anything like that. What's this here? Those are three levers. Well, try pulling one of the levers, I suppose. I can. First, I'm going to try the door. Sure. 
Okay. Are you going to walk up to it? No, with the mage hand. Okay. Mage hand, five pounds of pressure. It's a solid metal door. As, as like I mentioned before, too, it is rusted at its yeah. hinges as well. Just checking. Is there, is there, does it look like there is a doorknob that's meant to be like turned and then it opens or it's just a it's just no. a piece of metal? It's like a... <laughs> okay. What about if but clearly hin- there are hinges, though, that you can see on your side. Um, are they half can... barrel? Uh, no, they are <laughs> solid, rusted. Um, looks like a secure door, but uh, double hinged. Um, your Majesty... Would you prefer the closest lever, the one after that, or the one after that? I will stride forward with more confidence than I feel, and I will poke my head in and look towards Debris. Um, <clears throat> flo- botanist, whichever, uh, whichever you feel the most drawn to. <clears throat> Move by the spirit. Furthest one, then. As you move in, there is a little bit of blood under the two levers on the right-hand side of the hall. Heather uses her mage hand to try and manipulate the third lever. Okay, third being... So are they are they near, middle, far, or are they top, bottom? They're kind of... I think you can see them. There's two there's on the right-hand side of the wall and one on the left-hand side of the wall on the, the map. So. All right, I'm going to do the furthest one on the right. Furthest one on the right. Okay. We'll call that lever three. And um, is so no one is standing there then? No. So you pull the lever. Um, you see three little hatches open. And what, uh, I, I did four, but three um, <laughs> bolts, um, like crossbow bolts, shoot out towards the... Uh, the lever and just clatter harmlessly on the ground. All right. Try the other one. And it, the lever then <laughs> returns to its upright position, and you can hear the sound of crossbow bolts reloading in the walls. And you also hear this sort of this um, sort of grinding um, whine of gears turning and metal shifting within the walls, and then it goes still. Well, that seemed to work. If you want to die, I. Makes you wonder what the others do. The the door isn't open yet, so. (laughs) She does the closer of the two. Oh, shit. Okay. So the closer of the two on the north. um... You have to try everything once. Yeah. Uh, Who is in the uh, room, by the way? I'm at the doorway. The the ballroom, you mean? No, in the, in the, the room here. I'm just peeking around the corner. And oh no, no one's actually in there. Okay. Yeah. Manipulating, you know, as as little of myself as like actually, I suppose Doll could fly in there invisibility, invisibly, and just sort of hover at the top of the um, of the the ceiling, and um, and she as, could use her yeah. mage hand, yeah, like that. It's up to you. We'll do that. Is that what you want to do? Charred fish fairy. I mean, if yeah, if I can, if I have the ability to use mage hand without doll going into the room, then I prefer to do that. But if I don't, I'll say then... yes. Um, okay. For these these two ones, so you, you do this other one next to it, this visible. You pull it, and you see, um, you, you hear another uh, click, 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 click sound, and then suddenly, um, a couple bolts of electricity zap throughout this room, and then you just. It stops. You just hear a quiet hiss and smell, (laughs) smell of ozone and burnt dust and stuff kind of sitting. And then you hear a (laughs) sound as if something is recharging within the walls again. And the lever pops up to the top position. Last one. Pull the lever, (laughs) Krug. I will say... Put the Without candle being in and looking around, it would be difficult to see this last lever. Um, just by the angle of the doorway and everything, um, someone will probably need to at least poke their head in. I'll poke my head in. That's the last we saw of Prion. <laughs> <laughs> of Prion's head. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, just out of curiosity... Okay. I, I don't know if Nether's the one to do this, but 
she'll she'll look at that leather le other leather lever and think it can't just be that easy and she'll start looking around at the walls is there, are there any hidden buttons or levers or anything like that uh make an investigation check now she does this she does mention it out loud she says if i really wanted to hide something i would put a bunch of obvious choices and then make something hidden how about my a seven seven yeah you look you look about no it's it's you can see the little um Maybe little uh, flaps in the wall that open for the traps and such, but other than that, it's just pretty solid metal hallway here. I mean, you have a point, point, but at the same time, there are people who lock their luggage with like one, two, three, four, five. So you know, it it could also be a combination. Maybe you have to pull more than one lever at the same time. Maybe. All right, Prion, tell me when the hand is close to the other one. I will navigate. Okay. And as you get there, pull the lever. Prion, please make a constitution saving throw. Da, 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 da. As you hear oh. sound. Oh, nice. Prion, you feel really sleepy for a second, but you um, oh, uh, shake it off and pull your head back and the gas dissipates. Right. And then right the there, lever reset. I can't be put to sleep like that anyway, so. <laughs> it's Curse of Straw all over again. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be magical, it could be chemical. Um, True. Don't give Peter ideas. All right, then. Um, shall we try more than one at a time? It is, in fact, chemical as well, so. It's, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I mean, we could sick. Mage Supremo here on uh, the room. See if he can find any hidden levers. Nether's mage hand comes back and sort of waggles in front of Mage Supreme. Can't you do, can't you do this too? Uh, not today. I'd need to take a rest first. Hmm. I was planning for a party, not a investigation. <laughs> So what's is it, it going to be, friends? Is it worth a third level spell? <laughs> when I was looking I'll... in there, did I see anything other than the thing, like, investigate-wise? No, um, that's that's it, pretty much what you guys have seen. The three levers, the hatches for the traps, the electricity buzzing between the doors that Melvin detected as being having illusory magic to it, and then the solid iron door. It has hinges, so you can tell it can be it should be able to be moved. It's not like a straight up and down, but that's uh, what you see. Uh, if I walk into this hallway, I'm not going to yep. pull anything yet, but I want to take a look at around, take a careful look at the walls, the floor, the ceiling, and the door itself. Yep. Um, get as close as I can while staying safe and hopefully not get electrocuted by this illusory lightning. Or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Are you sure the lightning's illusory, or maybe something behind nope. the lightning's illusory? <laughs> Just why I'm not getting too close. <laughs> so as you move towards it, you feel a little bit of heat coming from the the lightning. Okay. Just, you can kind of just an, just a slightest bit. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm not going to get much closer, but I'll I'll take a really close look at everything else in the room first. Um. Okay. 14. Yeah, looking around, you can see just about every bit of the trap details, and then you can also see just, you know, the um, bit of rust in the corner mm -hmm. that seems to have dribbled off of the door, and yeah. Here's a question. Um, these lines of electricity going by, is it three distinct lines? Yep. How high off the floor are they? Probably one about shin length, one, you know, middle of your, like, midway 
midriff area and one probably about shoulder height. You're going to do this Mission Impossible style? I was going to say, uh, try and see if you can throw something underneath the... Uh... I actually was going to pull out a copper coin and flip it toward the electricity. Okay. I want to see if the electricity is going to arc to that coin as it... You ping, and it kind of clanks off the door and falls through one of the lines of electricity, just to fall to the ground. Hmm. Interesting. As he contemplates, my stalking outside the door has gotten more furious, and I think <laughs> hey, they might be like a little like... Ugh. The uh, pacing back and Lady Garnier is like, are they having issues with the door? Obviously. I'll roll my eyes. Right. Um. It did honestly kind of sound like there's a lot of potential for death back there. So, you know. Cares. Is that blood on the floor over there? Ooh. Yeah, you might you might need a carpet cleaner or something. Um, I'm gonna take out a bit of copper wire that I have in my material pouch, mm -hmm. and um, put a uh, take my take my knife out and see if I can stick it into the floor at all. I'll say sure you can find a bit of a um, seam in the metal okay. tiles just, and... just so it can stand up on its own and right. then I'm going to coil yeah. that copper wire around it uh -huh. and then uh, hand one end of it over to uh, Nether's mage hand um, can you uh, take this and hold it into the one of the streams of electricity I want to see if it's going to conduct the electricity to ground oh. don't cross the streams uh, and then I'm going to back away from it before not this really happens. sure what he's asked but she uh, thinks she understands and waits for him to clear and then does so mage hand goes in to the first stream of electricity just passes through no sparks on the blade the blade just passes back and forth through the electricity up uh, to so the, the, the blade is in the in the floor grounding it's the wire it. that's going up. it's the wire, the wire that yes thing just goes yep. through the electricity it doesn't alter its path, its motion, anything about it. I don't think the electricity's real, guys. I think we can just walk in and open the door. Hmm. And I'll start That's... winding up my, my wire again. Wish me luck, then. I'll just go in, walk in, and, walk, and open the door. Good luck. Heat. John, you feel this heat as you approach this bzzz, buzzing light, and as you pass through it, it feels a little bit warm. It, that's about it. And you push this door, it creaks open and reveals a turn order drawing room. Not a turn order, actually. So um, here there's a uh, you hear this incessant overlapping tick and hum of machinery in this glimmering, vibrantly illuminated, but aging foyer. And the steady swing of a pendulum sets a mellow tone in the room. There's an iron furnace connected to a series of pipes that disappear into the ceiling. And the floor, between these floorboards, there's this slight hiss of steam as warm air moves up from below. In the center of the room, there is a luxurious but fraying set er, of uh, seats framing a worn rug. And there's a wrought iron spiral staircase leading to a second floor. A door here and a door here. Ah, liquor cabinet. And uh, you see the Lady Garnier <laughs> walk past to this item right uh, here. I, I, I wouldn't uh, touch that. It's the grandfather clock, and she just kind of opens the bottom, and sure enough, there appears to be um, a glass decanter and some glasses. Oh, sweet lords, let me at it, and I finally cross over the threshold <laughs> of the ballroom, and <laughs> we'll walk into that room. <laughs> Well, we, you haven't found the kitchen for me yet, but this is, um, I think this is a nice place to sit down for a second at least, don't you? One thing at a time. And in that case, let's uh, head to break, um, as you have discovered the 
steamy drawing room. Mmm, oh. yum. <laughs> this drawing room has so very little decoration. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh we're gonna head to break thank you all for the um, positively um, the hype train uh we're gonna be about 10 minutes here uh sorry i went a little bit long then we'll return for to finish out um exploring um the grand lord inventor garnier's interesting little mansion here so yeah um, and welcome back everyone <laughs> you didn't believe me did you I didn't. Why should I ever believe you, Jade? Why ever again? No, I'm kidding. Oh, Welcome yeah. back, everyone. Thanks for sticking oh, around. Um, we are in the uh, event. The, excuse me. The mansion of the mad inventor. Um, or mad inventor or just genius inventor. Maybe a little bit mad. Uh, uh, Lord Garnier. So. Damn you, Edison! <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> And uh, the party has just come to sort of a little f uh, foyer here with a large um, furnace in the corner, metal stairway leading up, two doors aside from the one that they entered. And um, the new Lady Garnier has just left to go um, sort of open up the container or the uh, cabinet below this grandfather clock. And she pulls from there um, a, a couple decanters of alcohol and some glasses and offers the group um, drinks. Kind hostess as she is. Uh, just a reminder to all of you, if you haven't yet exclamation mark giveaway, do it because we're giving away some massive store credit when we finish up our stream this evening. So uh, thanks to Crack and Dice for that. And thanks to all of you for your incredible support. Absolutely incredible. So, party, you are able to take a short rest at this point if you would like to do so. Right. Uh, like I said, if anyone uh, is rolling hit dice, you may roll an additional d6 as I provide uh, some restful music. What's the restful music sound like? Kind of just improvising on the violin. I'm... It's rather tight-lipped during this uh but for my ability to imbibe the alcohol that lady garnier has uh hmm. acquired she doesn't it's not the uh down among the dead men let them lie <laughs> yeah away, not really uh, away, feeling that away. mood right there uh. um so just a little bit of a sort of mournful solo violin thing going on in the corner as mm. i between free every few phrases or so kick back a little more to drink. <laughs> yeah. Harding or fiddle style. Anyway, um How much does Mariah drink? All of it. <laughs> How much is there? <laughs> is that the easiest question? The easiest answer. So there's about uh five bottles in the cabinet of different levels of being full um there's like a um what looks to be a bottle of port which is unopened there is a decanter filled with what looks to be a whiskey or brandy or something like that two of those in fact with crystal stoppers there's another um uh two other smaller bottles that are filled with sort of an unidentified liquid that she kind of takes off and um uh takes a smell of and she's like oh father had the strangest tonics that he would always drink for health. Um, if anyone would care to try, this one may be a bit off, but... Melvin. Well. Does it look magical? She hands it to you, and um, it does have a potion-like look to it, though... Um, the contents seem to be maybe a bit volatile, not in the sense of being bad, but in the sense of being a bit, um, having some increased variance to the possible effect, if that makes sense. Um, I would say uh, that over the course of the rest, I probably go through two pretty full glasses as I'm playing away. 
and the um the uh, harm the the harmonic uh quality of my uh playing definitely goes a little adventurous towards the end of that there's a lot of weird modulations and uh strange chords lots of double stops Okay. So, uh, so Melvin, one is an iridescent teal color um, the, of the potion. Another one is um, almost solid looking and ivory. So sort of like a glue-like consistency. So Anything that doesn't look like a regular alcohol, I'm going to take the time to identify during our short rest. Can you cast identify on potions? I uh, I would assume so. I just have to be able to touch the object. Hmm. Never cast. I've never identified a potion that way. Choose one um, object that you must touch. If it is a magic item or some other magic imbued object, you learn its properties and how to use them. Whether it requires attunement and how many charges it has, if any. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Um. Uh, you will be able to determine over the um, rest. The teal one, <laughs> you will be able to smell gold within 300 feet of you for 1d4 days. What? <laughs> and the other one will cause you to grow gills on your neck for a few hours, the solid liquid one. You detect that there are, there's a bit of, chaotic magic within it too that has an effect that might be a bit random that you don't quite not you can't quite put your finger on can't actually use the gills to breathe the water you just grow them <laughs> well you can i was about it's, to ask uh, that they're, they're functional gills functional gills <laughs> you grow God. wings you can't fly sucks to suck. you turn into a soliston and <laughs> anyway <laughs> um vestigial um, yeah, I'm going to explain that to everybody. Okay. Oh, give the gold one to Nene. Gold, gold one? And I immediately look interested. Uh, yeah, this, this potion will let you s s smell gold within 400 feet. Uh, I raise my hand. I'll take that one. It lasts for a couple of days, Sean. apparently. You get shown. As she says that, I sort of hiss under my breath to her. Don't you mean her royal majesty? Yeah. Titles implied. Is this, this term Nene, is it one of respect and deference? Absolutely. Uh, abs absolutely. I'll, I'll turn to her and I'll look flustered. <clears throat> oh. Yes. Well... You are you are my guest, Nene. Uh, oh no, you I can't. So, it, it's she's actually rude. Paying, she's just paying you respect, Your Majesty. It only you know works it in my comes court. From a, did you know it actually comes from a song? It's a really ancient melody. Oh, by the gods! Because now watch me whip it. <laughs> watch yeah, me, I was Nene. Say, yeah, you need a whip. A Nene. <laughs> <clears throat> it is only a term that the inner court can use, and I will turn and glare at all of you. I <laughs> and I am going to chug oh, the gold magical. potion thing. Does it only have one dose in it? Yes. Okay. There it goes. And you suddenly can smell all any gold item, any gold in the vicinity. Now, the kicker also, is it all makes it smell like shit. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's not fair. Um, please yeah, what roll does gold a, smell like? Uh, please roll a d20. Oh, God. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, <I'm laughs> no. sorry, sorry. Don't sorry, drink sorry. potions in Ravenloft. I want to smell gold. Oh, fuck. It's a, it's a six. No, nah, don't, don't worry. Nah, it's, it's not that kind of roll. I mean, it could be that kind of roll. Gold smells like it smells like sweaty copper. 
That makes but, sense, uh, actually. Unfortunately, you do not smell gold. <gasps> oh. No. More importantly, what does she smell? Uh, yeah, huh. Blue jeans. Uh, <laughs> who are you standing closest to? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's Prion. Say <laughs> 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 He never. He never takes off that armor, you know. So. Mm. Yeah. Um, Prion's made of gold. <laughs> I, I have a question. Um, th- this might not be of importance at all, but I could I couldn't help but notice your description of the clock being a grandfather clock. Um, does it bear any resemblance to the clock that's in Dominic's cell? Um, it does. Looks almost exactly the same make. Yeah. In this, in the moment, as Nene. Um, I assume starts swearing at the fact that she does not in fact smell gold. Melvin, why did you lie to me? Um, <laughs> I become sort of distracted by the, uh, is, is actually, is the clock uh, ticking still? Are you still um, um, moving? Are you walking up to it to look at it? I'm, I, I imagine at this point that I'm sort of lounging on one of these chairs, kind of like half um, paying attention to things around me as, and half paying attention to what I'm playing. And okay. I'm I'm watching the clock now, and if if it's ticking, then what I play starts to match the tempo of the ticking. Okay, cool. Um, you uh, see, then the Lady Garnier kind of um, approaches the clock again and closes it, and as you match your tempo, she kind of looks up towards the dial, and suddenly, um, you hear this little winding sound. Tick 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 tick. Little door opens on the top on the face. The face of the clock entirely splits, and this tiny little clockwork creature steps out with a um, spear in hand and raises it in the air and says, "The time is one forty-eight in the morning." And then turns around and walks back, and the the clock shuts again and then starts ticking normally. I get an attack of opportunity. <laughs> Doesn't that remind me of that Modron that we found? The Modron. We're yeah. marching. Yeah. We're marching. Go, oh, That's wonderful, isn't that? Isn't that sweet? See, Papa's inventions were always the sweetest little things. Did he? Uh, and- did he make other clocks? Ah, uh, probably. Hmm. Though. Regular clockwork was probably beneath him. Certainly, I I wouldn't expect anything less than um, well, that a gesture haphazardly with my bow, nearly taking out someone's eye, probably, and then <laughs> whatever phrase. <laughs> how did he die? If you don't you, mind me asking. How much have you drunk, Mariah? I'm curious. Oh, I'm I'm by the end of the short rest. Um, on top of whatever what was already consumed at the party, I do two. Uh, pretty full low balls. Pretty full. Okay, you, you're f- doing the four finger bourbon yeah. measurement there. That's yeah, just <laughs> all the way. <laughs> um, gotcha. The tip of the glass right. is there for a reason. Why would you fill any lower? Insult <laughs> <laughs> to the glass. Yeah. 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 Use it. Use use the object to its full potential. Okay, good to know. Paid for the full um, glass. I'm going to use the full glass. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, where are we? Uh, that's I what happens. You can notice that there's a little. Sorry. Hmm? I asked how he died. Her father. Um. He was old. He fell ill. Um. Had a terrible. Um. Well, his health got bad towards the end. Um, breathing issues. Um, he always said he, well, it was due to the work, inhaled vapors and things like that, uh, the craft. Um, Is she being truthful? You can make an insight so check. Suspicious. Suspicious, suspicious. Twenty-two. Um, yeah, she seems to be 
seems to be telling the truth to this point yet she hasn't um lied to you that you know of too just as a um note it's been odd as it is it's been straightforward for the most part stairway does it go up or down up 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 the stairs we go um but before we kitchen does anyone by the way does anyone sit down did someone okay people are sitting down um i like that question (laughs) nether sits on the chair on the stairs i was gonna sit on the couch I'm definitely like fully splayed across the armchair, like legs over one side. Understood. You kind of hear this, um, clink, 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 clink sound from the northern door coming. Um, it's this rusty creaking and clanking that seems to be coming from that direction. Sounds like we might have a visitor. And clink, clink, I stand clink, clink. Ready. And you hear, um, uh, pardon me, my lord. Joints aren't as oiled as they used to be. Clink, clink. clink. It's taking me some time to reach your location. Since I'm halfway to the kitchen, can I grab you something on my way? Does it no! Like right! I'll be right back. with you then! Clink, clank, clank, and the, loud, the, the steps grow louder and louder, and suddenly the door swings open, and you see this construct standing in front of you, made mostly of metal, about as tall as a uh, regular human and uh, um, you can see that the every step it takes is labored and it has this glowing teal monocle around one eye and is wearing a top hat looks like this <laughs> damn <laughs> he looks so good and the Monopoly guy is roided out. <laughs> <laughs> and it um, looks at the rest of you. <laughs> Who are all of you leisuring in the house, Garnier? I, I'm we are alcohol to... testers. I point my bow at him still sitting and say very imperiously, you, sir, are in the presence of the Lady Garnier and the Queen of Darkness and should bow and show deference. Uh, make a persuasion check. Okay. <laughs> mm, persuasion, persuasion. 18. Okay. Um, he goes, it goes, uh, oh, my. And it lifts it top hat off its head and does a very painful sounding bow my apologies lady garnier and bows towards you mariah and then pops its uh hat back on her her, not me oh oh dear oh dear my lady Please forgive me. I am Arcus. I was your father's trusted servant, constructed by your great grandfather Fritz von Wierg. I live to serve you and your family. Ugh. He kind of. Oh, you've already gotten refreshments. Oh, blast my bucket of bolts. I have failed this again. <laughs> Is there anything I can get you, mind you? It may take me a few minutes to get it to it. How about instead of uh, wearing out your uh, poor joints, you share with our good friend um, Archmage um, Supremo over here um, your knowledge of this great house and all of its um, 
inhabitants and uh, contraptions and stuff. Archmage Supremo. Yes. Uh, it, it's well, Archmage Melvin, actually. Archmage Melvin the Supremo. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, it is. And Neris okay. will interrupt. Yes. Archmage Supremo. That is his name. You must use that. Thank you. Okay. Mm, this is the main level. You may take the elevator to the upper levels in order to find sleeping accommodations for the Lady Garnier as well as mm, a workshop. The other locations and it kind of locks its head and turns towards Lady Garnier. Mm, uh, 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 those are all of the locations within the home. <laughs> 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 right. Mariah, are you pissed? What? Are you pissed already? I feel fine. What are you talking about? I ain't angry. I, I think he's asking if you're feeling the effects of your drinks. I always feel the effects of my drinks. <laughs> That's a very good answer. What's down that corridor? Harkers. Uh, which way are you pointing? Where we come from? Um. So, that is the dining room, beyond which is the billiard parlor, the kitchen, and my resting station. Have you not got any oil? Of course. Have you run out of oil? Mm. You look a bit mm. rusty. Oh. Never have I been so humiliated in front of so much company. Yes. Does any of us have any I... oil? Wait, do you need oil? I, I, hold on. I <laughs> pull out the bag of holding and <laughs> extract from it the alchemy chuck. Ah. Which I oh, haven't wow. used today. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I totally <laughs> got this. I knew that was a good reason we got this. <laughs> I, I can't. I, do you? Do you? Do you, what? Yes? No? Maybe? Lobster? Uh, if if you would be so kind. What do you do? Do you drink it? How does it work? Uh. I don't think he drinks it. Do you I think he it? uses it on the on the joints, like you would oil the Here, Melvin, hinges. <laughs> oh gosh! How specific do you have to be with that thing? Do you have to say lubrication fluid or oil? Do you have to specify what kind of oil? Whale I'm pretty oil? sure it just makes Amp olive oil? oil or something. Vegetable oil. Mineral. Pretty sure everything that this makes is edible. Huh. Really? Uh, I think so, yeah. Acid <laughs> is not edible. Oh, does it make acid? <laughs> Technically acid. Which, which version of the alchemy jug do we have, I guess, is the question. We have the the uncommon item, I believe. I didn't know there were multiple versions. There are. There's multiple colors. Oh, sweet fuck. I did not know that. <laughs> they, they have, the they right have different tables, yeah. Mage Supreme on. Melvin, you can rub the robot in oil. Good luck. Give him a good rub down. Um, before I do that, I, I'd like to use some prestidigitation to try to clean his joints a little bit. Obviously, it won't grease the joints, but maybe it'll clean off some of the rust and stuff. Okay. And um, between summoning oil, we'll say that regular oil is a good job, and cleaning off some rust and stuff. You can tell that part of parts of his body are actually corroded to the point where there's no fixing it it's Arth just uh, arthritis yeah uh but you uh he does uh, uh express um gratitude with an um an extraordinary amount of accompanying embarrassment uh, unfortunately I, I have not prepared the spell grease today otherwise i'd be able to fix you up a little bit better but 
No, don't no have to do. Do not trouble yourself, please. You are a guest of the l- Lady Garnier. Mm. How oh, may I? I interrupted you. Oh goodness! Please <laughs> accept my apologies. And oh, uh, no need, no request. need. Uh, I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about some of the um, mechanisms that uh, the Lord. Garnier has left behind. Uh, we've already encountered one or two of them on our way in, um, and we'd like to avoid any unfortunate accidents oh, as yes. we move nice. through. If you, if you would direct your attention over here, this furnace that you see is a device for burning fuel in order to create steam. I would not touch the exterior lest you burn your hand. Over here is a grandfather clock. Please do not insert your finger into the machinery. It will pinch you. The doors are very heavy and may swing back upon your heels, causing pain, bruising, and limping. I will ensure that the dining room tables are properly pushed within the proper place so you do not trip over them. Mr. Harkis. Play attention. Yes. We would be very grateful if you would escort us to the workshop. Ah, right away. Follow me. And he. Is he quicker this time? Uh, no, he's moving at about it. You'd say his speed is about 10 feet. Um, For half the so he kind of <laughs> limps his way through. <clears throat> and then you see um, in this room hanging above these uh, billiard tables is in fact a um, large portrait Um bring this up dogs playing poker (laughs) (laughs) that would be funny um we stay here we start uh the lady uh mentions oh that was my 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 grandfather um fritz fritz von wirk Um, yeah my my father taught him, um, my father, er, he taught my father everything he knows. He was the one who built the house originally. Um, and he always used to give me the, the sweetest little toys. Oh. What's that he's carrying, that strange thing that shouldn't be in D&D? Good to yeah. say, it looks rather like a bazooka. It looks like something a Neris um. should have. Hey, DM, he carried I, around as... this strange stick at times with a um, <laughs> with metal on it. Uh, I feel like I saw one of those in a past life. Maybe in a tomb somewhere. Sadly, it exploded along with all other known versions of itself. <laughs> <laughs> um, Forever yeah, and always. The party follows the um, the robot into the billiard room. I hang back for a moment. I just want to take a quick peek at the grandfather clock. Um, can I investigate it? Sure. As you uh, walk up to it, the clock face opens and a little creature steps out and says, The time is Shush one face. fifth. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> Do you have a name? It just looks, as you start to ask it a question, it just looks to, to start panicking. Its knees, little knees start shaking. Okay, Shit. tell me what time it is. The time is 1.49 in the morning. You are so good it at It looks your job. so proud of itself and it turns around and just proudly marches back into the clock. Wait. <laughs> um, I will. Can know. I have you? Check. I find Just nothing. Keeps marching and then the. the... No, 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 no. Oh, that would have been so cool to have on my arm and tell me the time. 
That Every you would minute. have stabbed it and dismembered <clears throat> it after about ten minutes. You are now asleep. <laughs> I was. <laughs> it will, uh, as the um, as Harkus the Butler um opens this door. You see, um, a room that is kind of defies understanding. There are dirt, there's dirt and cobwebs here that marring a um, partially collapsed wooden floor. Brass and copper pipes and valves run along bare stone walls like veins. Six four foot round, um, six inch tall pedestals encased in copper line the floor, three to either side of the room. The complex series of pipes slew across the floor like thick tree roots and connect the pedestals. And, um, he's, I <clears throat> will be with you momentarily. Needed to just uh, very quickly refresh. I and steps there and suddenly you see some sparks emanating through his body and it stands there for a second then still some hissing smell of burning ozone uh, very well the elevator is right this way and points towards a little secret passage which leads into a square room he will gesture everyone to enter in I'm a little triggered by the last time that we went into an elevator. I was gonna say, where, where is uh, where is Ryan? <laughs> my favorite decision anyone's ever made in my game. <laughs> after, after it goes up, walking under it and just looking up. <laughs> and can we all pile in there? Yes. Okay. And he will take you up <laughs> the second floor. As you exit the elevator after him, you will emerge into what seems to be a small gallery or kind of trophy room. Um, there's the ale, the, the ale, <laughs> the air heal. Fuck. Air the heel. air here is stale. Wow, that's that was really hard to say. <laughs> the air here. The, oh, is that hard to say? The air here is stale. Up? The air here is stale. The air here is stale. Anyway, the air here uh, is stale. <laughs> I think it's one of those things when you're reading it, your your tongue wants to do the different consonant. Anyway, um, a decaying, faded rug that swallows uh, most of the floor is spread out here. Um, six glass cases encircle the room, and model wings made of flaking leather sway gently from unraveling ropes secured to the Ooh. ceiling. Super cool. Hey, okay. hallway leads to the center of the western wall, and a weighted wooden door ahead is bolted shut. You can see here, um, at least in this room here, there is about um, there are numerous locks of various sizes, all locking this door ahead. Is there anything in, in these the cases? cases? Are, um, yeah, an interesting uh, um, items. There is what looks to be a long wooden stick with a metal pipe attached to it. Very similar to what was slung over the shoulder of the person in the poster. You see um, another strange uh, uh, contraption, some crystals and um, pieces of copper and such all stuck together. Um, here is a uh, model of a broad-shouldered, armored, humanoid-looking um, creature. Um, looks like maybe a suit of armor, or maybe a um, maybe a man made entirely out of armor. Um, then this uh, the lady runs over to the one, one of the display cases in the corner and says, "Oh, that's." That's one my grandfather gave to me. That's, he brought it back from somewhere far away. He found it and repaired to me. Look at, that's, that's my, that's my little Piddlewick. See? Oh, sweet fuck. <laughs> and she, and he points, she points to this, um, little miniature doll behind the glass that looks like this. Oh my God. 
now. No. <laughs> no. Denied. Looks perfectly normal Denied. to me. I don't know what you guys are talking about. He's no fun. He's no Blinsky. Yeah. <laughs> you know Blinsky? Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah. Mariah thinks nothing of it. Um, Melvin, you uh, you, do, you don't still have that glasses? Uh, no, it takes me another up. couple of minutes to to recast it, but I could if you wanted. Might be uh, might be worth at this point. Okay, I'm gonna start ritual casting to text magic again. Um, I'm gonna papering over my glasses. Take a pass through the room, see if anything stands out to me. Okay. Looking around, there are some other little trinkets. Um, one of the things is a... Um, it looks like something that could attach to the back of that doll that um, almost... that um, look like a couple spider legs that come out of the back. It's, it's very strange looking, but that's in a separate display case. And... Um, yeah. Uh, that's... That's pretty much all you see in 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 these. Iron spider. Yeah. Harkos, what's in this door here? And I point towards the northeast. Oh, pay no attention to that clutter. What's in there? He starts to uh, look. Like, oh, um, not should not go in there. Well, you see, uh, the, 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 the Lady Garnier has hired us to help her catalog the um, contents of the mansion that have been left behind after her, well, inheritance. Um, so if we're not able to go in and, and check everything, then we're not really able to do what we've been asked to do for the lady. I'm sure it's nothing. Let's continue on. And he, uh... Is there a keyhole? Moves down the hall. Um, no, this door is um, entirely wooden. Can I listen at it? Uh, yeah. Make a perception check. 24. Damn, son. You hear sort of a, um... um creaking iron sound that is sort of ever so slightly shifting and moving and scraping across the ground occasionally. I can hey, hear Breon. something in there. Breon. Hi. Put a pin in it. We'll come back. Okay. I'll follow Zero, what? All right. And uh, the workshop, then. The only one in the house. And he smiles and uh, gives a big smile. And can I um, do I believe him? A, what? Do I believe him when he says that? I can inside check. <laughs> I don't believe the him. only one in the house. <laughs> completely a, uh, sort of awful cool solitary. <laughs> No other interesting that. Yeah. rooms that anyone an would possibly want to see. <laughs> um, you think that he um <clears throat> believes it, or at least it's the only thing that he can say. There is some dissonance about the uh, statement um, compared to his other things. Uh, his programming seems to be pushed to the limits. Um, this you know, uh, resulting in some incongruous statements. Uh, so there are worn down toys, and um, you see that on the bench there are two approximations of um, uh, what look to be arms made of human arms made of wood. There are three spindly, sharp appendages extending from a hole in the north wall look to be tools and uh, different types of vice grips, perhaps artificers, assistant uh, sort of devices here. And uh, that is uh, what you see. And then you see, oh, there he is. What? 
you're not all the way fixed, but oh my god. And she rushes forward and picks up the actual, you know, not life-sized, but regular-sized um, doll of Piddlewick that you saw the model of in the glass case. It says, well, he used to dance about and play music and make funny jokes, and he always made me laugh. Oh, he was my favorite toy. She kind of holds it up and says, Oh, I might just have to take him with me. Better watch over you when you sleep. <laughs> oh, that's silly. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll just leave him here for now. And she sets it down on the workbench. Um, Mr. Harkis. Yeah. Uh, yes! <laughs> What sort of things are you not allowed to show us? Ooh. Mm. Hey. That question is highly inappropriate, madam. Well, how about what things are you not allowed to show the Lady Garnier, who now, in all sense of the word, as far as I can understand it, is your owner. Oh, uh, uh, well, oh, I make a uh, make a persuasion check, Nether. Fuck. <sighs> oh, actually, no, I'm all right at this. Because it's funny. Not when I roll a two, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, it looks, it kind of shakes its head and says, hmm, Please, um, Lady Konya, I'm happy to assist you and your guests with any accommodations you need within the home. Um, but, uh, but please, let's be civil and upright about all of this. Uh, what knocked that door I, down? What did, what did you say? What knocked that door down? I looked down to the end of the corridor. Oh, my. I... Oh. And he kind of goes and tries to fiddle with it and uh, try to pick it up. I, go I have I go with slightest it. clue. Oh, dear. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> and um, we'll reveal... Um, I'm waiting for the I'm other the other it. setting of the Iron Giant to make itself known here. Sort of. <laughs> a uh, bathing room. There is steam uh, sort of emanating from here. There are shelves full of glittering tonics, vials of wilting plants and other apothecaries oddities. Um, and then... Uh, Stone steps leading up to a algae-coated stone basin. Oh, this there is, is nice. a wooden handle connected to a chain dangling above the stone. A bathing room. Very nice. Um, Have the... you ever been in one, Prion? I was just about to say, just, can someone help me get this armor off? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, whoa, <laughs> nope. I carry her once now. She wants to undress me. I can't give her a wink. Did you say that? To... <laughs> Would you say that too? I said it to the group. Well, was it to Nene? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Nene said that she was taking off his armor. Mm hmm. Oh my! Oh dear! What is it? Is it? Maybe, maybe look. leave the armor on for now. It seems like we're not out of danger. Huh. Well, I mean, look around the room. Um, the tonics that were glittering—do they appear to be magical? Um, yes, more more alchemical rather than straight up uh, magical. But yes. Well, I have I have detect magic up now, so. Um, you get the sense that they would have potion-like effects similar to the ones you discovered downstairs. 
Um, Melvin, do you want to help me take a sweep of this room real quick, see if there's anything notable? Sure. Uh, yeah, we, we should definitely catalog everything. Um, By is which that I blood mean on the floor there? Or wine? What? In, in the corner? Um, is that blood? Yes. There's blood on the floor. Uh, is it blood? Or is it wine? There's a, sometimes it's like hard a... to tell. <laughs> Do I see a body? No, so there's no body. Um, okay. and, uh, I ain't got no body. <laughs> <laughs> um, and really what I mean by asking Melvin for help is that I will assist him on the investigation. <laughs> I'll take a look around the room. Okay. Um, uh, honestly, that's pretty much it. You can take five different tonics that are highly volatile. Um, and it will be... Um, random effects should you choose to um, imbibe them. Cool. You know, Five fun stuff like that. Man, and then put those in my bag of activate some sort of mechanism. You would imagine it looks like it opens a valve or something to um, heat the water in the tub. May I take a plant? Sure. Just want to have a plant handy. There, you can have a plant. Strange that it's still alive, but alive it is. I mean, it's only been a week since he died. What caused that blood? I do not like these little sound effects, by the way. Sorry, I don't know <laughs> what little sound wrong. effects. The 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 soundtrack for this this room has I like sort of it. eerie music going, and then every now and then there's like a little. Oh. It's really creepy. This one might be just as creepy. I don't know. Um, I'm going to turn to the robot and ask him what the blood's about. What, what, what caused this blood stain on the floor? Um, He will look at Oh, I haven't the faintest clue. It's been some time since I've been up here. I've mostly been, well, asking over and over if the master would like something every time he comes in or sits down in the drawing room and he never needs anything. So you've been the neediest guests we've had in decades. It is such a pleasure. When was the last time that you had to serve your master? Well, that would have been, well, approximately 23 years, 4 hours, 5 seconds. Yeah, son. So he's Time's been dead. a fuckery. He's been dead that long. He hasn't called on me since then. And which which master are you referring to specifically? Well, the late Lord Alfred Lord Garnier. Yep. Which is father. Very I'm confused some time by that fuckery statement. shit here. Let me try another door. I'll try this door. That has ten locks on it. Wibbly wobbly. North door. Timey wimey stuff. Um, if you go up to the north door, um, it is locked. Nether sort of calmly opens up a pouch at her side and pulls out a set of thieves' tools. Okay. Shall I try my hand at these knots? Hi. Unless the um, robot's got a key. He kind of starts uh, 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 unsure of what to do, and you see the um, We're here to do Adelaide a job. puts a hand on his shoulder and says, Perhaps it's best you go uh, rest and recharge. And he, of course, my lady. I will be at your call should you need anything. And give he kind us the of keys before you go. Stumbles away. Now, is it 
under, did we know that it, that she was not telling the truth about the guy having died ten days ago? Or? To our understanding, as far as I'm know, she thinks that it was a week ago. Where but, where did, when did the time fuckery begin? Well, I have personally, as a player, I've had a sense that since we got here, that things are aging too quickly. So we're going to come out of here. And... I don't know. 13, that, like, there's, there's some HR. something weird. Right. Uh, Nether's going to try to open these ten locks. Does anybody have anything All they right. can do to help you um, uh, Nana can probably just assist you for advantage. Mm -hmm. Or you could assist each other. I, I mean, I'm happy. It depends on who's got that better skill. Um, assuming it's going to be you. My slide of hand is a plus seven. All right. Do you have thieves tools? I do. All right. So if we both have tools, can I give her advantage on these checks? Um... Um, sorry. You will be. So get the door open. Excavation mark giveaway. We're giving away $25 and $50. So as you are Dead. approaching this, um, Nether, you hear the sound of a kind of rumbling within the house that sounds that starts very low and um, far away below your feet and then <laughs> sounding like the elevator that you just risen ridden has risen from someplace far below and up to the current level and then and then you hear that sound of it the door sliding open I think we've got company I'm um, going to cast Armor of Agathus. I'm going to pull Adelaide into the room with the flowers and oh. hide around the corner. Oh. Did someone follow us? Cast Mage Armor. Okay. Paper mache Get armor. out in front of me. You're tankier. Everything is then quiet except for these sort of... You, you, you've come to know the general hum and ticking of the walls. It started to feel normal, but you feel like behind every wall um, there is some sort of clockwork mechanism always working throughout the whole house. There's warmth anytime you touch a wall, steam powered, um, spring powered, all of it just constantly moving beyond the walls. But the area that you are currently, besides that, you don't hear anything, you don't see anything. I, uh, I would like Doll to sort of <coughs> flit down the hallway and take a look and see what might be okay. in the... She goes, she can see the passageway into the elevator. Continue, or he it's continues right, into yeah. the elevator and looks. It's the robot. We told him to go back and recharge. Doesn't see anything. Oh, right, but close. this was the sound of the elevator coming back up from somewhere far below. Right. It was. Okay. And in fact, as Dahl goes to investigate, so I kind of mess this up actually. The door to the elevator is closed. I see. All right. All right. Well, then. there it is then. I'll send the manifest mind of my spellbook to go join Dahl. Okay. Floats down the hall and goes over there. And then I'm gonna bring Doll back so yeah. he can help me with uh, help me with exactly. <laughs> doing the locks. That was that was my thought. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll um, leave I'll leave that there and it'll it'll watch and make sure that nothing comes out of the elevator or we'll know at least. Your Majesty okay. would you be so kind as to show us that customary 
unlocking trick that all royal people of the Emberdark know of. To do. I and she uh, says, I, I, "I understand that your your ways are strange and different, and you may. I, I will not view this as as criminal and untowards." <laughs> While uh, the lock picking is going on, I'll um, sort of draw back a little bit and strike up a light conversation with Adelaide just to sort of keep her, I don't know, away from the horrible things going on near the door. Sure. Okay. All right, so you can be distracted from that. Um, Move my microphone closer to my face. Is that better? Yes. Ooh, okay. Dulcet Jeez, tones. Sorry. Uh, do, do. uh So, again, yeah, there are numerous locks on this door, and uh, we can make, um, it's fine to make one check for them at this point. Um, Oh, I will sing you a small ditty to give you a bardic inspiration. Give Veneris bardic inspiration. To give Queen Nene (laughs) bardic inspiration. It's short for Chardonnay. <laughs> yes. No. And Sean, I barely heard you, but I think you were. I'm giving you assistance. I'm helping you. You're. Uh, you're I'm, I'm taking. Out. Yeah. I will approach the door and kneel down. I'll take the pack off of my shoulder and dig around through it. I'll pull out my thieves' tools kit, unroll it, and begin to. <laughs> Pick the lock. And as you're doing that, Nether puts her hand on the door and kind of turns her head as if she's listening. She takes out um, a small, tiny little hammer and hits the door and then moves her hand and hits the door again. This one. I will nod and... Nice! Yes! The pattern of the tumblers is easy to discern. And as you click each one of them, you can see that they have this sort of interlaced pattern between them. And um, finally, the main bolt slides away. And you feel the door is unlocked. Let me open Here it. In. Uh, um, yeah, again, I gotta feel like the misdirection here. There's one door that's got a bunch of locks on it. Does that sound like the one we should go in, or the one we shouldn't go in? DM, really quick before um, the door opens, um, towards the end of that casual conversation, I really, really quick ask um, Adelaide, um, that was a really, really strange comment that uh, your robo-butler made about the your father being dead for 23 years. What'd you make of that? Well, he's, he said that he hasn't served him in 25 years. Could it have been he just was... Ignored and unused, or hmm. perhaps it's one way of interpreting it. I don't know. Um, this I'm very curious to know what's behind my door here. Would you please open it? I stand. Yes, by. absolutely. I'll open it. It reveals a grand bedroom lavish gilded metal bars uh, weave around to form a spider like chandelier chained to the ceiling Um, magic orbs of flame seem to float around the um, the circular bits in a pattern that almost has this sort of gyroscopic effect as they sit there cool. it's very pretty kind of mesmerizing um there is a chest sitting at the foot of the bed heavy banded and beside it um yeah and uh 
a mirror at the side of the wall and a nice little chez in the corner. There's also a door in the south that le- looks like it leads to a closet or something like that. I resist the urge to dramatically lounge. Any magic, Melvin? I was just about to ask that. Um, I'm going to peek into the room and see if there's anything magical, especially that chest. But I figure the, the lights are magical, right? Yes. Um, and as you have pulled open the door, you see there's, uh, with your passive perceptions, but actually everyone in the party sees there is a thick trip wire on the bottom of the door. Yep. About six inches off the ground. Careful. It wasn't very well hidden if everybody saw it. Everyone I imagine, could see it. I imagine that there might be something else that we're not intended to see if this was this obvious. I'd like to take a very close look at the entryway to see if there's a, a hidden tripwire or something. Sure, make an investigation check. That's advantage. Okay. Wow. 17. It's not been Melvin's day for investigating. No, it really has not. <laughs> um, looking at it, uh, you don't see any other... Um, any other trip wires or anything on the door? You know what it is? It's because I'm not rolling my Kraken dice. I'm rolling everything just, in just... roll 20. There you go. So was there anything magical inside? Good question. That I can see from outside the door, Peter? Um, no, not nothing from outside. There's uh, nothing besides the lights. Nothing is magical. Well, the chandelier's magical, but that's all I can see that's magic right now. Hmm. What are we Careful finish? of the tripwire, though. I bet. Do we do we trip the tripwire? No. Maybe we that never trip is a the trip play. Wire. Wait. Did, Anyone can is see it this. attached to anything. It does disappear into the wall, into a little, um, uh, you know, hole. Is it possible We're to go through the there. room without going over the tripwire? Mm. I, I tried and couldn't go tap under the floor it. in front of the ground, but you uh, you underestimate my limbo abilities. <laughs> <laughs> Six inches, huh? <laughs> um, you're you're that tapping so on the other side. Of the <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is solid. Dun, kum, kum, kum. <sighs> It is what it is. I will step over the tripwire. Okay. Into the room. Step into the room. No issue. I will follow careful not to set off the tripwire. Okay. It's very easy. It's not anything not in the all this time. I'm starting to think that he died in here or died somewhere around here and he was locked in so he couldn't get out so he died of hunger or something i don't know so where's his body then i don't know that's what i'm looking because obviously there's blood in certain places so i'd like to take a close look at this chest not here but the blood in here yeah we just unlocked the door that doesn't make any sense um as you approach this you might have been able to detect it from the door you do sense um if you have detect magic up uh, Mm -hmm. uh illusion magic coming from the chest somewhere within the chest though um okay on the inside something magical inside this chest and there is a Um, ornate lock to it and i've rolled a natural 13 for a total of uh 20 on an investigation check to check for traps on that is it ornate in the same way that the uh lock on um dominic's headpiece is ornate yeah it is and uh looking at it melvin you see that the magic centers somewhere around the keyhole, you think that a failed attempt to open this chest might trigger a magical trap. Okay. Well, it looks like there's a trap on this that will go off if you don't unlock it successfully the first time. How hard can it be? 
I'm gonna right back here, up Majesty. just in case. I am out of the uh, room. <laughs> Can't be that hard. And hopefully I can give some kind of assistance. No, no I'm giving you assistance, my dear. Oh! JK! Be careful. No pressure. All right, you gonna try and pick it? Yes. I will approach. Onto the bed. We're jumping on the bed, Nether. Sweet. Give you a sort of a snotty look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll you say that, the but chest. I'm sure the bed ends up being a mimic or something, given our yeah. luck so far. <laughs> If the chaise wasn't a mimic, the bed's not a mimic. Alright, I will approach the chest and I will kneel down in front of it and do the same you, thing I did to the door. I'm as you do, of... there's a there's a fluttering sensation next to you as if something very small is beating its wings very quickly. I glance up at Debris and then I glance back down to what I'm doing. You can hear the tools clink as I attempt to pick the lock. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Wee! Oh, no. You're at advantage. Oh, no, no. You're at advantage, and you've also got bardic inspiration. Ha ha ha! You can use, use your bardic inspiration. Lap. Get it over I'm 20. Using, I'm using bardic inspiration using D6. D8. D8. So I should have Kraken Dice and not this. Okay, so 21. It does not explode on me. You hope. I hope. Reader's taking a long time. The, um, the, the chest kind of opens and you see a little flash of green light within. Daenerys, please make an intelligence saving throw. <laughs> oh no! God. Don't I have inspiration? Can I use my inspirations? <laughs> Already rolled, well, babe. Daenerys, you open the chest and you think, oh, great. And then you see that little creature that climbed out of the um, clock before. You see one kind of hop up and goes, um, You're a dirty thief! and stabs its spear into your hand. Suddenly you see six more, six more dozens suddenly streaming up your arm, all stabbing you um, furiously with their little spears. Um, the, uh, and, um, Suddenly you see your whole arm is covered with these little creatures stabbing you with little spears. The rest of you see Inaris just calling out in pain. Um, Inaris, you take a point of psychic damage. Okay. And let's see. Um, You believe that you are covered in these things. The rest of you just see Inaris start to scream and yell at her arm as if there's nothing. Inaris, this is a, uh, a you are being, you're under the effect of something. You can try to, um, actually, so what we'll do is roll a couple um, investigation checks in a row. Uh, can I run in and grab her arm, thinking it has something on it and check? Sure. Um, I haven't got investigation, but... Oh, wow. Okay, natural. So it, immediately after taking that damage, you look closer and realize that these are illusions crawling all over you. The chest sits open. You have um, you have opened it, yet triggered the trap, which was a very difficult DC to disarm simultaneously with the, um, with the actual lock. But now, as soon as you see them as illusions, these little creatures crawling all over you and stabbing you, they f sort of fade away into nothingness. You guys oh. will find within the um, box, wrapped up in a piece of cloth, is a stone that matches perfectly the color of the monocle that the butler wears. Um, 
There is a um, a couple spell scrolls. There is a journal, and then what looks to be a very heavy iron key. Many potions, or I mean scrolls. Um, there are three scrolls. Okay. I'll, I'll take a look at those. I would okay. love to some look point at the, later. I'd love to take a peek at the journal. Okay. Opening up, um, it is a journal, certainly of um, Lord Garnier, written a bit feverishly at times, scattered thoughts. Um, there is talk of um, a, just glancing over it, seeing words things highlighted, underlined. Do you see something about a, the doll that had come recently to repair for his daughter, at least before he passed? You can he, see him saying something about time being limited, that he would um, pass soon. You also see um, uh, talk about um, about consulting with um, about with father below when he talks about certain projects or certain things going wrong with the house um, saying I've already been I've already gone below this week but I must test his patience again yikes <laughs> um Adelaide when uh, she's kind of you're... lounging on the couch picking out a few uh, fibers then oh yes um when you uh, spent time with your father while he was still alive um did he ever talk about your grandfather I don't think I think they had a falling out uh, grandfather always viewed him as he didn't have the flash of genius that my grandfather did. He was, well, he was very intelligent and um, mostly keep up with the place, I guess, but um, he fell short of expectations, I think. So, I suppose during his life, he would wish that he could lean upon the wisdom of your grandfather for things to not go his way. I suppose. Though I haven't... Grandfather's been dead for some time. Hmm. Yeah, got that sense. Hmm. DM. Yeah. May I pick up the gemstone? Yeah. You pick it up, it's cool to the touch. Flashes a bit in your um uh in your hand, and as you hold it, you feel a connection to something. There's almost an expectant feeling about it. Maybe like you're being watched or something is waiting for you. Harkus, would you join us upstairs, please? And you hear, you feel an affirmative and then soon enough hear the elevator rise and the cool. automaton walks itself over and looks towards you, this time a little less formal and uh, um, more robotic. Oh no. Does anybody want a robot? 
I could always use one for a pet. Me. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps we can now encourage him to show us the things that he didn't want to show us earlier, though. Oh, uh, that's a good idea. Um, what about the door down the bottom? The one I'm standing next to? Aye. I think it's a closet. Arcus. He has some capes or something. What happened to the master? <laughs> and it kind of twitches in the, uh, his head twitches a bit and the monocle glows teal and looks at you. Am I authorized to speak freely in front yeah. of these? Good. Yes. You are authorized to speak. I believe I am told that the master died some days ago. He has been here only in passing from times, mostly locking himself upstairs and descending to the lower levels. Do you know where his body is? <clears throat> she kind of speaks about I know where his body is we buried him not long ago hmm. then I'll just ask him one more question and I suppose I can what would you like to know what's in the room that uh, is behind the display cases I was told I should never go there or I would be utterly destroyed. He would occasionally throw waste in there from the workshop. Good to know. Ask him about below. What can you tell us about below? I believe it's where I was made. Where the house was truly constructed from. And where Von Virk currently resides, such as he is. Ah, the real workshop. I think you broke him, she says. He's... Uh, grandfather's been dead for uh, some time. Your father's journal suggests that some part of your father, I'll hold up the page where, or se several pages where this is mentioned. Some part of your grandfather, perhaps his mental acumen or spiritual presence, or maybe even something mechanical, has been left behind, preserved. So does that mean it's not really my house? I guess it kind of depends. If your grandfather died, but was preserved as an object of your father's make, then it's probably yours. But I guess we won't find out until we look. We should probably make sure of that though, right? Do you have a will? Well, if my father is the dead inheritor, then it is recorded and his belongings pass to me. But if he does not rightly own this place, then I... <sighs> then I have nothing. Then so... Investigate and make sure that we figure out what the situation is and hopefully turn it in your favor. Harkas, are you capable of defending yourself? Barely. What would you say is your most useful function? I have impeccable manners. 
I have never poured anything less than exactly four ounces of wine when requested. <laughs> when I pour ale, the foam fills perfectly to the rim and just above, creating a nice pillowy, cloudy head. I can set a rug perfectly in a room. It really brings the place together, and I can tilt picture frames with certainty beyond your wildest dreams. I could let this am... go on and on, but I've got uh, one question. I am both enamored and horrified. I want to know what went down, sorry, what come up earlier from down very deep below. There was something that used that elevator after you. Um, I believe it is a countermeasure, one that has confused me many times. Would someone care to close the door to this bedroom and stand outside? Sure. And I can demonstrate the countermeasure. Mind the uh, tripwire. Yep, I step over the tripwire. Okay. What's the tripwire for? I don't know. But you seem to be all fine. That is good. Would you like me to disarm it? That uh, sounds like a good idea. When I know. It's, it's, okay. it's, it's not Disarm it's not anything anyone. that could be of harm to us. Any mechanical traps or devices. Is this countermeasure going to hurt me when you close the door? I've never seen it harm anything. Okay. See you on the other side, y'all. <laughs> close it. <laughs> Mariah, and you hear it clicking as a couple things lock and as you're standing there suddenly you hear a thrum of energy and you um, hear an imperious voice um, uh, that speaks out and says intruder be gone from this place Oh, wait just a few moments. It will reset. Approach the door again. I approach the door. <laughs> you have disobeyed the master's wishes. You are no longer permitted to leave. Now step away. Step away from the door. I step back. And suddenly you hear a rumbling from below the house as if the whole thing is shaking. And you hear the elevator rise to the top level and hear the door hiss open. After all these years, it seems to have malfunctioned and done the alerts in the wrong order. I imagine that would be terrifying. Uh, GM, does my manifest mind see anything in the elevator? No. Okay. In fact, being over there, the sound was just an illusion of something rising to the top. Um, meant to sow the paranoia of something coming to attack. Well, that fucking worked. So what do we do? <laughs> do we go down below? That's definitely what we should do. But we Gotta um, go find Pops. Should we rest before we go down there? We just rested. One last question. It's okay if I stay up here and uh, see if any of the uh, see if he finished uh, has any notes about Piddlewick here. Sure. How about you peruse the journal, I'll hand it off to her. And can I, may I um have the gem? Oh uh, yes, absolutely. Don't mean to be pushy, but uh, should be mine. That's fair. We're gonna take the key and see if it's usable on anything downstairs. Obviously, when we're done, we'll pass it back to you. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to stay up on this chaise. It's actually really nice. Yeah, it looks really comfy. Damn. Maybe that unlocks the door here. 
I should get a chaise for my cabin. Because this door. I'll locked. see if I can find anything out about that door. Um, maybe something in the journal, or I don't know. Um, Harkus, what's well, behind that door? <laughs> um. He it says, uh, this room was not one that I visited often. Though it would make sense, I should have provided coffee and tea and mm, put down the bed and made the bed and washed the linens, but I was not permitted to enter. I was forbidden from the closet. I would have put those garments with a plum. I'd I mean, like to take a look at the closet door. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the completionist in me is like, we're not leaving this yeah, floor no, until we know right. what's behind every single door. Yep. <laughs> that's I'm fine. So with you. Yep. So, uh, anything that's so locked, we will do the same right. thing with uh, and there is and I doing them. Yeah. And I'm going to take a look for traps first. Completely full of junk, unlocked, and a study. Though you have found mm -hmm. a journal that reveals more than anything you would find in here, there may be some interested tidbits that will be sort of post-session things to reveal. This door, however, um, is locked. Um, there are two key. There are two keyholes. One seems perfectly fit for this iron, large iron key. Another one that you do not recognize that you can try to pick should you wish. Which door is this? Sorry. The one, one you're right in front of. Oh, the one I'm in front of. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is the, did you there appear to be any traps? Um, you can make an investigation check to check. Check to check. The Going closet is deck? locked? It is. Apparently. A very good uh, lock. A natural 17 plus 7 is 24. Finally, a good investigation check. <laughs> um, uh, no locks, just a... Um, no locks! Lock. Sweet! No traps. Or no traps, just the lock. Just the locks. Great. Right. Guess we're back up. It, it's not right. trapped, just Should locked. Okay. Nate, I'll, uh, I'll approach with Debris. I'll look Debris. up at her and. Alright. Teamwork time. I'll rub my hands together. Remember, if anything Teamwork jumps out, it's probably an illusion. It's painful illusions as I rub my hand. I will begin to pick the lock. Okay. Almost landed on the one. Yeah. Sweet. That is a 26. Oh yeah. Easily pop this lock open. The iron key will do the rest. And opening it up, it reveals a pedestal upon which is a glowing green wrench enshrined upon this pedestal. It um, seems to have... Um, abjuration magic emanating from it. The Based on your um, investigation checks before um, with the door, as the door swings open and as you look at this room, you see that the wall immediately inside and to the right cannot exist the way it looks and there is an illus illusory passage leading from the closet to a hidden area 
and a hatch in the floor. Um, I'll point that out. Oh, who wants to put their hands on the big? Thing. Yes. Who wants to put their hands on the big tool? Glowing <laughs> 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 green lounge. <laughs> God. Uh, You're not supposed to have armor on anyway. <laughs> Why? Why do you want him out of his armor? <laughs> uh, I don't mind picking you up. You take it? Yeah, I'll uh, pick it up. It's probably so radioactive or some giant, shit. giant, this green glowing wrench in your hand that seems to thrum with some sort of energy. Can't exactly tell what. But as you hold it in your hand for a few seconds, it, uh, the vibrations decrease just a bit, and you feel just this sort of regular metal, maybe just a hint of some other sort of energy to it. This is still showing magical to you, Mel. Uh-huh. It is. It, yes. Should we just hold on to it for now? Do you want me to try that? A trapdoor. It's a wrench of quenching. No. Wrench. A, a wrench of. Wrenching? A wrench of wrenching. A wrench of wenching. Uh, no. DM, um, just briefly, and we, you can uh, tell me more about this later, but um, when we opened up this study room, I definitely would grab, like, the five most interesting books in the room. Interesting looking books in the room. Certainly. Yes. Um, yeah, we'll, I'll, I'll make note of that. Thank you. Sorcerer's Stone. Chamber <laughs> of Secrets. <laughs> the Prisoner of Azkaban. Mm. Wow. Your um, Wait a minute. And um, do you guys open the hatch by chance? Okay. Yeah. Why not? As you do, there is a glowing orange light coming from below. It looks like the shaft extends at least 40 feet straight down and steam the smell of hot metal and grease emanates up from it. You can hear a louder sound of gears turning, of a hammer hitting metal, of, of something molten the sounds of forging the sounds of tinkering are um wafting up from below and um you have revealed the way to um an area that uh, the butler did not know existed nor did uh, well for the most part um and uh, there was no other way to get down there. So heading down to the forge is where we will, I think, pick up cool. next time. Uh, 